Hello and welcome to the Fire Breathing Kittens podcast, a standalone 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons podcast. Every episode is its own mini-adventure, so you can listen to them in any order you like, although I have yet to come across anyone who does just that. Anyway, I'm your DM this week, and joining me for this wild, wild ride, um, ending, is Dr. Crud the Third. Hi, Dr. Crud the Third is a 13th level doctor. He is a loxodon, stands about five feet tall. No, 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 I'm sorry. Five, that's five feet eight wide. Eight feet and tall. Eight feet five tall. Feet, yeah. <laughs> is he lying down? Actually, because of the last episode, it's eight feet two. That's true. You gain two inches? I yeah. gain two inches. And All I can right. allow you to as well because I have lots of spider eggs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you eat them, to clarify. <laughs> yes. Uh, Dr. Crud is, wears blue jeans, a white button-down shirt uh, with a red tie. He's also got on a leather doctor's coat with uh, his name embroidered on the left side and he has a beans pocket which is currently empty and a jenny pocket which is currently full okay wonderful next along on this trail of adventure is nesgrax hello this is uh nesgrax Skarsbrush. i'm a dragonborn i'm a former noble and um i'm a necromancy wizard i'm about uh five foot ten 150 pounds and um I'm brassy. I'm a brass dragon. And um, I recently got some stuff back that I lost last season. So, like, I have my staff that turns into a snake and uh, my batwing cloak. And uh, I've got some other goodies that I'm ready to, to play with. So, yeah, here we go. Oh, the, the, they finally got returned from the evidence locker. <laughs> yeah. And last up is Olive. Hey, everyone. Olive is a level 13 way of the open hand monk. She's a bipedal crocodile dressed in baggy brown pants and a white Jedi style robe. She has 80 teeth. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, we removed a couple <laughs> some weeks <laughs> back. Four. <didn't> we? <laughs> so none have grown in the meantime, though. No. Okay, I'm just going to write that down real quick. She doesn't want to experience going under again to have it removed. Yeah, no. I might wake up on a spaceship. <laughs> yeah, it was traumatic. <laughs> She's learned that every single time she gets, like, <laughs> anesthetic, she wakes up on a spaceship. She doesn't want that to happen again. <laughs> anyway, team, let me just give you a quick lay of the land. So this episode follows on from last week's episode, uh, which was called, I named it, it's called Bombs, Brownies and Beefs. Close. Brownies, Beefs and Bombs? No. <laughs> <laughs> It's got all those words. <laughs> Brownies, bombs, and beef. Is that it? Yeah. I know beef is last. You got it. Anyway, this, this follows on from last week's episode uh, in which Beans, Olive, and Aaron managed to expose the plot of the Changeling gang. So now all of Nicomoy knows what they've been up to. Now, so for the last couple of weeks, this uh, takes place a couple of weeks afterwards, the city is in absolute uproar as like businesses and guilds and you know politicians have to you know feel the need to prove that they're not a changeling. How they do that is up to them and your own imaginations. We won't go into it right now. However, there have been reports of um, you know people in positions of power, so you know politicians, other you know uh, guild leaders, maybe some like librarians or wizards from the White Tower, uh, suddenly going missing and then reappearing a few days later with missing memories. So it seems as though the Changeling Gang is cutting their losses and uh, noping it right out of there. So this is where the situation lies in Nicomoy, but this particular adventure starts on. Let's say it's around the marketplace of Nicomoy, where uh, Olive, Nesgrax, and Crud are wandering the market stalls in a bit of a heady haze. It's weird. It's quiet because you know we haven't had too many kidnappings or uh, <laughs> dragons going missing or any any massive crisis for at least ten days. So it's been nice and relaxing. What what are you guys doing just to to pass the time in this? 
um, mini holiday you've been having. Hmm. I think Nesgrax is going to be near like the end of his semester as a sophomore at Nicomwee Community College. Um, so he's going to be cramming hard. So he's walking around with like a stack of textbooks, freaking out, sort of, you know, going like, okay, okay, okay. Eye of Newt, um, a fingernail of Toad. Toads have fingernails? I can't be right. Hold on. Okay, Crud, Doctor, the third. <laughs> I caught myself. Yes, you did. <laughs> he is set up right now in the middle of a market with his uh, mobile free clinic, just seeing patients. Do they leave well, or do they leave like missing body parts, or do they have extra body parts, or? They all leave very happy. Thank you very much. Okay, so you're drugging them. Well, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> Cannot possibly confirm nor deny. <laughs> without my attorney present. Yeah, beans is nowhere to be found right now. Nope. Uh, Olive, uh, how, how are you spending your, your free time? Olive is carrying boxes. She's that friend that helps you move. And right now, she's helping Malathia move into Marlo and Remy's place. They had been wanting a new roommate after Olive herself moved out. After Sea Scouts and Theater Bouts showed her that she was a bit more of an adult than she realized after she hung out with children, she was like, yeah, maybe I don't need roommates. So she had moved out, and they were hard up on rent money, so Olive prepaid for Melithia to live there for two years. Oh, and helped her get a amulet of translation so that she can understand Common and pursue her dream of being the best snake actress in town. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, Nesgrax, while you're mm -hmm. walking along trying to remember the difference between uh, transfiguration magic, illusion magic, and uh, the magic of song and dance, there's, 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 you know, there's, there's a fine line in between those three. Um, you feel in uh, the back pocket of your robes a weird buzzing noise. It goes... Oh, ooh, I feel something. It's probably just a phantom vibration. I get those sometimes. I'll ignore it. You gotta okay. poo. Oh, that must be it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, you, you ignore it for a little while. Uh, you get about 100 meters further down the, down the road, and it starts going again. Oh, okay. We that, can do the entire one. episode like this that, if that, you want. <laughs> I don't mind. That feels real. Okay, I'm going for it. Oh, what's this? Um, I, oh, yeah, I, re in, I, I in pick your, it out of my in your back In your back pocket, um, you keep forgetting that it's there, but there is uh, a conch shell oh, that yeah. is vibrating in your hand. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My, my, my conch shell. Uh, it, it's like my special um, communication device to... to um, yeah, it's like your it's to, like your emergency red conch, yeah. For for Mendax, yeah, yeah. I I do I have forgotten about. I haven't pulled it out. Yeah, luckily, luckily it's still I, I threatened to once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Um, but it's vibrating. I wonder what I should. Uh, I hold it up to my ear. I say hello. Um, on the other on the other on the other end of the line, you hear your old friend Mendax who says. Hey, Nesgrax, it's Mendax. Does this, do you still have the conch? I'm um, wait, no, so of course you do. Of course you do. You're using it, silly. Yeah. Sorry, mm -hmm. it's been a while. Um, do you have a moment? Um, I've kind of got a job for you and maybe two others. Uh, you hear a bit of uh, chatting in the background and go, yeah, yeah, two, two others. If you've got a, a couple in your um, immediate vicinity. You can okay. Hold, if, hold on. If you, let, if, let, if, you, let me like, if you're not if you're not like done in the marketplace or anything. Oh, okay. One sec. Let me just check. One, two. Yes. No. There's two others here. I suspiciously am always with two other people from the guild. Yeah, I found that it was really it's really weird, isn't it? But I, you know, such yeah. is the way of things, isn't it? Yeah. Hmm. But yeah. Um, yeah, if if you can go grab them and uh, just come meet me, uh, do you know the uh, the place on the harbour? The place on the harbour. Yeah. yeah, you know the place Is on the harbour. Did we have like a romantic fling or something that I'm forgetting on the harbour? 
I mean, not that I know of, but yeah, just head to, head to the harbour. You, you'll you know where it is. It's the place on the harbour. How, how do you not know the place on the harbour? The place on the harbour. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll head to the harbour. Of course I remember. <laughs> what do you think? I would forget you and me on the harbour? Come on. <laughs> we, I know the harbour. I know the place. Mendax, you think too little of me. <laughs> is everything all right? Um, no, we'll talk later. We'll talk later. <laughs> And also, Nesgrax, um, you may want to put the conch in a different pocket. You've been butt dialing me like nonstop all day. Oh, those weren't butt dials. I miss you. <laughs> okay. I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> see ya. Uh, hey, guys. Quick question. I, I address my companions, Olive and Dr. Crud III. Have I ever bragged about me and Bendax? On a place by the harbour or anything like that? This one time you were drinking a lot, excessively, mm -hmm. and it was right about when you were blackout drunk. You told me a story. Oh, man. <laughs> well, as soon as you say Mendax, I just tune out. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, so, listen, uh, he just called me and he says that I should meet him at the place by the harbour. So, any... So, I, I guess th there's a harbor, right? Yeah. Nearby? Okay, I well, think it's he's... on the edge of the city. Okay, cool. Well, let's let's head down to the harbor, see if we can see Mendax or anyone who's like, he's a changeling, I guess. He might be in disguise. We should, we, let's just head down to the harbor and see if, see if he finds us. Yeah, I think he's got a job for us, and I am bored. Bored I... and stressed. I think this would be a good stress reliever. Let me just pop this guy's eye back in, and then uh, we'll get going. Ah! Ah! My <laughs> eye! What's happened? I can't see. <laughs> now you can. Ah! Oh! <laughs> oh! 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 And I just finished the last of these boxes, so I'm good to go. Wait, why are my eyes different colors? Goblin parts. <laughs> <laughs> And we all head off to the harbor, hoping that a light bulb will spark in Nesgrax's memory. Mm -hmm. Maybe if you have something to drink, like they say that if you have the amount of alcohol that you had before, it'll help you remember. Oh, that's a great idea. And I <laughs> immediately pull out a flask and start chugging away. And this is enabling when your friend has a drinking problem. <laughs> <laughs> Twist my arm. <laughs> All right, hold on, hold still. I got gotcha. you. Dr. Gretel twist his arm. No, no, crud. Jesus. What? <laughs> That's literally mad. Oh, sorry. Yeah, by I... twist his arm, he means twist the cap on his hip flask. Yeah, okay, sure. <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, you make your way over towards the harbour area. Um, there's a, uh, a pier that juts out. Uh, from the main harbour area, it's got a load of um, like uh, cafes and um, things on it. There are some people uh, fishing down at the far end. Um, the waves are uh, lapping up against the shore. It's a nice, um, slightly overcast day. Um, maybe some rain off the shore, um, but you know, far enough away that it's not not too cold, not too soggy. Um, you make your way over towards uh, the pier area because it seems to be where most of the people are, and um, eventually, wandering through um, the um, cafes, everyone's got their um, like tables and stuff outside. There are uh, people sitting around eating and chatting. Um, and, uh, at one of these tables, uh, Nezgrax, you see your old friend Mendax, who is um, sat at one of the tables with with a little, with an umbrella over the top, um, eating a cone of uh, chips. Um, as you. Uh, walk up to him, you uh, you look at where he's eating in front of, and it is a fish and chip shop called The Place on the Harbour, and the, the word place is spelled like the fish. That uh, uh, was in the back of my mind. There was going to be a pun in there somewhere. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's always a wildly disappointing pun on these adventures, so... <laughs> I, Take off uh, your bingo card. <laughs> I put my hands in the air and I start waving. Very, you know, um, exuberantly. I say, Mendax, Mendax, hey, it's us. 
Dude, hey. you're, like, you're like you're like three feet away. You don't need to. <laughs> you don't need to wave like that. It's all right. Come I'm just down. excited. Sit down. Okay. I've just ordered some um, chips. If you want some, uh, you got like salt, vinegar. What do you want? Ooh, yeah, that's great. I'll I'll have some chips. Sure. Uh, okay, I've just got. Um, oh, here, here she comes now. And uh, walking out of uh, the fish and chip shop comes someone you haven't seen. None of you in a very, very long time. Um, out of the chip shop comes walking Saffron Bee Lady, of all people. <gasps> bee Lady. I mean, Chartouse. I, um, no, hold on. I'll get it. <laughs> uh, maroon? No, it's flowers. No, those were the sisters I arrested in the episode The Sting. Whoops. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, uh, <laughs> j- just a catch. Uh, players and also audience, if they happen happen to listen to that episode. Uh, yet the last time we saw Saffron Bee Lady was in the episode The Sting, uh, in which Nesgrax, Olive, and Meerkat went over to the Museum of Natural History to try and foil the robbery of a big old diamond, which went a little sideways, but such is the way. Um, uh, one of the people responsible for that was Saffron Bee Lady, who was later in Scar's Bruce Redemption, I want to say, uh, was revealed mm-hmm. to be the de facto leader of the HHO. Mm-hmm. And here she is walking out of a chip shop. Mm, Olive ducks behind something to hide. Can I do a stealth check? Because I arrested oh, her certainly. siblings. Cerulean, Chartreuse, Fuchsia, and Lavender. I looked it up. Oh, wow, nice. Oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> Sensible. Certainly. 25 to duck behind a garbage can. or Oh, hop into the, just straight off the pier into the water. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was going to say um, the um, the bins on the pier are actually shaped like alligators. They've got like their mouths open. So when you, so they're kind of fun. So when you like, you can put your, um, your rubbish into the bins, it's, you just put them into the, like the mouth of the alligator. So, if you want, you can just stand behind there with your mouth open. <laughs> Feed me, Seymour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And let's face it, you'd eat any like leftover food anyone like has. Yeah, because this might end up with some free uh, fries slash chips. Yeah. So I do that. Yeah. Um, hang on. That's my dice. Okay. Uh, Mendax does actually spot you uh, just running behind the bin. Looks at you a bit weird, but he's like, uh, just turns his attention to uh, Dr. Crud and, sorry, Dr. Crud the Third. Proper respect. Uh, Dr. Crud the Third and Nez cracks and goes, no, don't worry. Sure, I'll explain. Sit sit down, sit down, sit down. Um, she's she's uh, come out with like a couple of cones of chips um, and starts handing them out to each of you. And there's mm. like <laughs> what one just like sat in a little, little like cone holder for Olive uh, in her chair when she's ready. <laughs> Dr. Crud puts Jenny in that spot. Okay. <laughs> She'll uh, start reaching up with her little uh, dragony uh, paws. Dragons have paws? Probably not. Talons. Um, and start picking at some of the chips and like chomping on them. She loves it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so Mandex uh, <laughs> looks at you and goes, Look, I know what you're thinking. Uh, this lady... Probably not the best uh, of people to be seeing right now, but, you know, uh, actually, do you want to explain it? And he looks over at her and goes, uh, she says, yeah, so I think I owe you guys a bit of an apology. Like, I mean, not just you. I think pretty much everyone here I owe an apology to, but let's start with you guys. Um, Yeah, I kind of, I kind of screwed up in this whole HHO thing. Um. It wasn't meant to end up this way. It was just like a, basically like an anti fan club against like you guys, the the fire breathing kittens, just because you guys like, you guys really don't pay your train fares. An anti fan <laughs> club. Yeah, well, that's that's the, cl- that's, the, that's the closest word I could find to hate group without saying hate group. So, for not. You you gave me free train fare. I didn't want to. There was like some like 
feeling I had that like compels me to. And anyway, that wasn't always me, you know. Like it was me maybe once, maybe twice. But the rest of the times, you know. All right. So so this whole thing has been over revenge for train fares. <laughs> well, revenge is a really strong word. But as I said, I just wanted to like set up like this sort of thing for like anyone who, you know, gets like messed around by you guys just to like chat and talk through it all. But like it got way out of hand. Like you've seen what's been going on. But, yeah, like, you took my Jenny. Yep. Yeah. Hey. I mean, I, I can't personally take any responsibility for that because I've been uh, that's that's probably the one wrong word to say, but look, let me let me just take you through it. Like I, I start I started this off just to, you know, for people to chat around and like occasionally maybe screw around like back at you guys, you know, just the occasional like pranks here and there. But like there was this what like one one day where like some guy just turned up like offered to like help us out. He's like offered his like like patronage, and said you know he could give us like financial um, like help, give us like resources, and after that he basically just like took over, and everything that went weird. We had that like museum job where he was like, hey, go you know steal this diamond. And like all my sisters got arrested, I only barely just got away with like, uh, like the like that that weird skull thing. And then like I got like tossed out at sea and like washed up on some random island somewhere. I had to sell that skull just to be able to stop like not starve to death. And like I've just been like hiding out ever since. And like I only managed to like come back. Ever, like since you know the rest of the changelings you know, started to scarper ever since you guys fixed that okay all right i calmly um put my backpack on my lap and i open the flap and i say i look down into my bag and i say rope get to work and the, my rope of entanglement wraps around saffron and <laughs> And ties her up. Okay. <laughs> and I say, I look at her, and I say, "What does H H O stand for?" Oh, you're gonna hate this. <laughs> um. So she's like, "Well, I mean, I can't eat my chips now, but it doesn't exactly stand." For anything, it's just a bit of a stupid joke. Cause like I'm sorry, if you what? Cause like if if you like write out H H O, and like you have two H's, so you go H two O. That's water in it. So like if what would like oh my God. mess up the, what would mess up the day of a fire breathing kitten? I like, if you just dumped a load of water on it. Oh my God! Ladies and gentlemen, that is, a, that is a face. <laughs> That is a facepalm a year in the making. His <laughs> face is turning red. He's got both hands slowly dragging down from his forehead to his chin. He's like, oh my god. <laughs> and Nesgrax Do you need a stands moment? up. He stands up. <laughs> and he just sort of like like a zombie, just like walks into the water. <laughs> he gets he gets up to about chest deep before he just stops and then just goes under. And Oh, Olive don't... jumps in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she she stops being a trash can and she saves her drowning drowning depressed well, friend. <laughs> well, what what Olive can hear it perfectly cuz sound carries underwater very well. Yeah. Are you screaming? But you hear the scream. <laughs> and it will haunt okay. your nightmares for a long time while the rest of you just hear this muffled sort of like <laughs> oh okay um, about two miles offshore uh, you see a whale um, breaching the surface <laughs> they think it's just a mating call just to get away call. from the scream <laughs> no they think it's a mating call 
Uh, okay. So yeah, I go I go with Olive if she's saving me. I'm not resisting or anything. Yeah, I I hold your limp, extremely angry body up to the air just to make sure you don't die. <laughs> Um, and then I, I guess I blew my cover. So. Oh, that could have been any alligator. <laughs> <laughs> I join you guys, but I don't take Jenny's fries. Yeah, you gave those up as soon as you decided to hide. Yeah. I mean, those you are could the, have the bee. You could have the bee ladies want fries. Oh, yeah, she's tied up. Um, I instead, uh, while she's tied up. Approach the table with, like, I don't have a hat to hold between my hands, but I'm, like, wringing my fingers, and I'm like, hello. <laughs> um, you, you, all right, you two are sopping wet at the moment, just to... Just to yeah, keep, I am uh, half the time. At least but, I'm not muddy. Well, yeah, Olive, you're fine, but, like, Nesgrax, <laughs> your robes are, like, soaked, and... um, And, like, any bags you have, oh, I had, what happened to your books? Just... Just as an aside. Oh, I'm, I'm assuming you didn't jump in the water with them, but... No, I, I imagine me, like, having taken off the backpack and, you know, when I put it in my lap, then when the rope came out, I just sort of, like, put it off to the side and then walked yeah, into the yeah, water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Those books are expensive. <laughs> you put it aside, you stand up, you take a deep breath, and then you just yoink yourself off, <laughs> off the pier. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, Dr. Crud, um, you've seen two of your friends, uh, one after the other, just jump off uh -huh, the pier. Uh, meanwhile, Jenny has just sat happily eating chips. Um, you've got a, a bee lady tied up, uh, sat next to you, and uh, one of your friend's friends. I'm not sure if you've ever actually met Mendax before. Not not like, um, you've heard a lot of uh, stories from Nesgrex about him. Mm -hmm. uh, from like last year and I think back in level one you might have done level one or level two hmm. yeah, way back when maybe yeah so uh, yeah. can you kindly explain to me how it went from ranks to terrorism yeah a little bit well sort of um, the bee lady says I <clears throat> So, so we started, yeah, we started off just doing pranks, like just, you know, occasionally, you know, putting stones in shoes and, um, like writing up, um, kind of jokey quests for you guys to do. Like if they're in like, you know, you know, rats in basements or cats up trees or, um, there's this really weird one about, uh, like a giant worm we saw, but that wasn't us. Um... <laughs> Just a quick call back there. But yeah, like th this guy, this guy, I don't even know his name. That's how weird it was. Like I, you know, he, um, he turned up, said he could offer us like resources and money just to help with us with whatever we wanted to do to like screw you guys over. And like the rest of them just kind of went with it and he just more or less ended up taking over. And like he brought in the, like the changelings who then, yeah, as you know, just like, Took over, like, you know, politicians, librarians, you know, people who, Me. you know, you, yeah, yeah. Did you, <laughs> did you get replaced by a changeling? Crud? Yep. Oh my. Oh, I didn't know that. No. Oh, geez. We need to talk more. We, we should have like a <laughs> stand up in the morning and just say like, you know, anything important or BAU and, um, you know, then get on with it. Well, we do actually top chat quite a bit. You're just drunk all the time now. Hey. Yeah, ever since you got over those mushrooms and mm -hmm. they wore off, you know, you've been drinking hard, Nesgrax. Yeah, yeah, true. You're good friends. Thank you for pointing that out. And I take another swig of from my flask. So there's no hard feelings about your siblings? <sighs> I mean, we do have a hive mind, so we can still sort of communicate it's a bit fuzzy at the moment because you know they're in prison but on honestly like they they were way more into it than i was i mean i was you know leader but i wasn't a leader in inverted commas sorry i forgot this was a an audio thing <laughs> um so 
It's like I was a you know leader, but I wasn't like the actual leader. I mean that that guy just like took over everything, and honestly, it's probably the safest place for them at the moment. If people found out they were you know at least partially responsible, they could be in more danger than they are at the moment. Okay, so oh boy. Oh good. In short, no, it's all right. Oh good. Well, wouldn't want these to go to waste, and Olive eats your fries. <laughs> <laughs> So where is this guy? That I don't really know. Um, and then she turns back to Mendax, uh, who continues the, the tale um, with, yeah, that's kind of what we need you guys for. Now, as far as I know, pretty much the entire Changeling gang has either been like apprehended or scarpered. However, there is one we have yet to get eyes on in any regard. And that is, um, you, oh, I mean, you'll know him by uh, Yul Sevchenko, also known as the only Changeling gang we've named, Changeling gang member we've named even. They're so, called Chain, Chainco? Chainco, yeah. No, uh, Yul Sevchenko, um, also known as the one who replaced, um, God, I'm blanking on, short dwarf guy, leader of guild, um, Nulisag. Nulisag. Nulisag, that's the one. He's, he's the one that replaced Nulisag back in times they are a changeling. Mm. So, yeah, he's the, he's the only one we haven't um, seen anything of yet. And he's more or less their de facto leader. So, my I reckon that if anyone is going to know the identity of this mysterious person who kind of like forced everything to do go, you know, all skewiffy. It's going to be him. Now, I'm not sure if I've, well, I, I know, I, I know I've mentioned this to you, Nezgrax, but this is all top, top secret info, right? So I used to be a member of that gang. Okay. But mm -hmm. I, you know, I didn't like where it was headed. So I got out. Um, talked to, you know, Devito at the DGS and got into, like, witness protection. And, like, these guys just seem to have followed me. Um, but the good news is that if there's anyone, you know, that's able to track these guys down, it's going to be me. And I've heard some whispers um, from somewhere up north that I, um, I get a feeling that he's up there. There's this one particular hideout we used to we used to go to this one little village um, on, on an island somewhere. Uh, it's called New Brain Town. Uh, it's an outpost of like the Braintish uh, Empire, like way up north. And we used to like hang out there and start smuggling uh, like, you know, whiskey and what else was there? It was whiskey, ale, you know, all the good stuff in an air you know. And mm -hmm. my information says he's up there. Now, I would go with you. Honestly, I would. But the thing about like us changelings is that we can more or less, especially you know, if we know each other, we can recognize each other by you know, just mannerisms. So if I went up there, he'd recognize me straight off the bat and we'd have to start all over again. But this time he'd know we were onto him. So um, I will be able to give you some like, like pointers, some hints as to... Um, you know, an idea of how you might best go about identifying him. Okay. Uh, okay, because uh, he, he'll, he'll be hiding out. He could be anybody there. Okay. So you said, like, you watch out for mannerisms and stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So every time we each took a new, like, identity um, during our, like, smuggling jobs, he would always have, like, these, um, like, personal signatures that, you know, we tend to need because otherwise, you know, you can lose your, your own personal identity if you, you know, take too many different identities in one go without having like a core cool thread in between them. So like me, I usually went for someone a bit, you know, sarcastic and flamboyant, that sort of thing. Him, he went, he used to, uh, he really loved um, like being in like a position of power, which really suited him being, you know, the leader. I mean, it wasn't. He wasn't leader in my time. He was like, you know, fourth banana or something. But he likes generally to uh, place himself in like a position of power. 
he has like very decadent um tastes so he always likes you know extravagant foods and like finery you'd probably get on with him nesgrax um but mm. i will say that he is probably trying to achieve something up there like i'm not sure like what it is maybe i don't know trying to find or get in contact with whoever's actually pulling the strings but if he is trying to do something nefarious it's probably a good idea to try and stop him however there is a bit of a catch on this one new brain town the people there are a bit old fashioned and by a, by a bit old fashioned i mean a few centuries behind so they are in general very suspicious of outsiders so if you've got a you know chat with them try not to let on that you're from you know over here and then also um sorry nesgrax a uh, crud this is going to be a bit tricky on your part um magic over there is strictly forbidden oh that's okay i don't know any magic no do you not no oh so so you so you just you know your your doctory stuff is just plain old okay, okay. Most, most of the doctors i know are like you know magical healers but okay yeah no it's all science he'll cut 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 you up <laughs> yeah i think i think you'd fit in well up there to be honest bud <laughs> like if you just cut people up with no magic whatsoever they'd love you absolutely and you know what i do know how to identify a shapeshifter from their internal organs so that is always something i can do <laughs> okay so when you say no magic there, like, what's the penalty? What are they going to do if I do, like, a firebolt or something? Oh, well, the thing is, it, it's not like, a, you know, if, if there was, like, a, an anti-magic cloud over the whole area. It's not like that. Don't worry about that. I think it, mm. it's just, like, they'd, they'd get a bit pissed off at you. Like, I, I don't think if you've got to, like, if you've got to talk to anyone, they'll probably be less than helpful if they see you doing magic i'm not saying don't do magic i'm saying don't get mm -hmm. caught okay what if what it what if i turn my staff into a snake i mean if this i don't honestly bud like you know if you if you gotta do any magic be sneaky about it oh, i think if they, if they if they see you doing it then maybe they'd get a bit peeved however if the snake just happens to wander into somewhere and you can save them I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> I'm guys, you, you're, you're adventurers. You've been at this a while. You, you know, the deal on this one, but yeah, go, go find Yule. I mean, get him back alive. If you, if you can, just cause you know, we go back away. I'd rather not have my old friends, uh, die horrendously, but you know, such is the way sometimes, but <laughs> what he says to his old friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's okay. I can bring him back so you can do it yourself later. Oh, that's, uh, that's all right. Um, I just want to remind you, you said that later. You know, this is the one who kidnapped Jenny. Yeah, there. I have no limitations how much, how many times I can bring him back. <laughs> oh, this will be fun, won't it? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, yeah, um, if you can just find out who's pulling the strings... That's what we need. That's the info we need at, at the end of this. So if he dies, then he dies. But find out the name first. If he dies, he dies. Sorry. <laughs> Ivan Drago. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any further questions? That this, this is DM speaking. Any, any further questions? Everyone understands. What are we doing with Saffron? <laughs> well, she's currently tied what? up, but... Hmm. I, I assumed you wanted to take her and get her locked up with her sisters. Yeah, I don't know. I, I I'm torn. Manex is like, oh, you don't need to worry about her. She's like volunteering to help with this. It's the same deal I took with uh, the the DGS. Um, you know, we'll we'll take care of her. She she will not leave my sight. Um, this entire time. Also, she's a bit tied up right now, so don't worry. We'll we'll take care of that. You don't need to. Yeah. I, I kind of, I kind of want the rope back, though. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you feel free. Take, so take, I, take the rope back. I, I snap my fingers, and the rope goes back into my, into my backpack. Okay, cool. You might not want to do that when we're north at in the north. 
What, even that? That's yep. considered magic to people? Yeah. Oh my god. Okay. Oh boy. It's gonna be a doozy. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna really suck for you. Okay. Um, listen guys. We, I don't know, how, how far away is this place? About three minutes from now. <laughs> about, yeah, about, <laughs> I don't know, ho what hopefully if, no more than four and a half minutes. Why don't, do you think it would freak everyone out if, if, if we rode in there on Fontaine, my magic rainbow unicorn? Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, really? we're going to take my carriage. That's the safest route for us to do. go. Oh man. Sorry, Fontaine. I will mention that it, it is on an island. Um, There's no fairy? They're non-magical and they have no fairy? Well, I'm, I'm just saying it's not the quickest mode of transportation. All right. Well, I don't know. Maybe we could, maybe we could ride Fontaine to, like, a, I don't know, like an, like an, uh, like an in, uh, discreet location, and then we can get off and we'll be on the island. I don't know. They might see us. Might be a little risky. What do you think? Okay, uh, if, if it helps, uh, Mendax will uh, say, if you want, you know, I know, I know it's going to be a bit, it's a, it's a bit of a journey. It's like, like ship, it'll probably take maybe two weeks to get there. But um, I've done a couple of favors for Bob the Harbour Master um, since we found out about this. And you might want to go speak to him about uh, some new, so, like some new breeds he's got in. Just, just tell him, like, just tell him Bar Barnaby sent you. All right, and uh, I reckon he'll yeah. be able to help you out. Okay, cool. All right, thanks, Mendax. Saffron, always confusing to see you. Yeah, likewise. All right, guys, let's go talk to this. Harbor master, see see what the hell Mendax is talking about. Yeah, I'm concerned about the whole breeds thing. Breeds of what? It'll be a surprise. It'll be fun. Come on. Yeah. We go. We go. Da, 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 we go. Da, da, da. Ba, 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 ba. You da, da, You're right. You wander da, 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 down the harbor, singing a merry jig, making up <laughs> sea shanties as you go, because as we know, for sea shanties, all you need to fit in are references to ships, booze. Like the wind, the horizon, I like sticking a bit of a lilt. So he's like, I was standing on a ship and the boat started to sink. And I said, oh, no, no. And I had another drink. You know, that sort of thing is really easy to do. So you uh, wander nice. down towards uh, Bob's um, Harbour Master area. Whoops. That was a weird, weird way of uh, saying area. Interesting. <laughs> uh, you wander down to Bob's Harbour Master area, um, and he's sat um, just on the side in a little deck chair, um, just sunning himself. Um, yeah, having a, having a nice little um, drink. I want to say pink with some ice cubes in. Um, wow! Just by his little um, like Harbour Master shack, um, and he he looks over as you approach and goes, "Hey, I recognise you." <laughs> You're the what fire breathing kittens, right? We are, we you served like you guys loads of times. Oh yeah, totally. Hey, um, you. Hey, how's Hi, it Bobby. going? Hey, Crud, uh, what do you guys need? Barnaby sent us. <gasps> ah, and a, a, a glint lights in his eyes. Barnaby, that ah, oh, that's a Barnaby's done me like a number of favors. Um. Recently, is I, I really owe him one, so we just uh, got some something something special in. He said he might be he might be needing. So if you if you follow me over towards um, boathouse number five here, um, I'll, I'll I'll show you what we got in. He said he needed something something fast and um, not overtly magical. Cool. So okay, uh, he, he gets up from his deck chair, uh, folds it up. Uh, Carries it under one arm and leads you over to boathouse number five, which is like right at the end of the dock. And um, give me all of you, just give me a quick perception check as we're walking over. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a natural 20 plus two. Oh, wonderbar. 
23. 21. Okay, everyone's basically in the same ballpark. <laughs> so as you walk over, um, you hear like the crashing of the waves, you f- uh, smell the salt of the sea, and you soon realize why whatever's in this um, boathouse is over right at the far end, because it's making a hell of a neighing sort of a noise. So as you get closer, you hear a lot of <laughs> noise. So if they're trying to keep something a secret, it's not going amazingly well. Um, okay. But as, as you're walking, you get um, far enough away from um, the crowds um, back, on the, back on the docks. It was like, yeah, we got these in uh, a couple of days ago. And, you know, uh, Barnaby said he might be needing them. I mean, let me tell you, these guys... They will get you wherever you need to go in, like, they can do, they can take you underwater, over water, uh, and, like, they can go about oof, 10 times as quick as this ship. They're absolutely fantastic. Very rare. Very, um, very, you know, very wanted, let's say, by the, by the oceanic community. So, um, have you, have you guys ever, uh, ridden hippocampuses before? Hip, hip, oh god. I thought that was part of the brain. Oh, yeah, that's what they're named after. Well, let, let me, let me just show you. Um, well, I mean, hippocampus is like the, the, the fancy way of saying it, but, and then, then he opens, um, the, um, the boathouse doors. They, they swing open with a, with a loud old creak, and inside are three, strictly speaking, hippocampuses are like, um, ancient Greek. Um, like mythological beings, which are like um, like a mermaid's like fish bottom with like a horse's uh, top. So that's basically what you know, seahorses, effectively. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> however, seahorse. however, um, well, like mechanically, they're basically you know giant seahorses. But I like I want them to be effectively skinned as regular horses with snorkels. Horse, regular horses with snorkels. Yeah, so just have gotcha. that in your mind because it's the funniest thing I've ever thought of. <laughs> so, okay. In my so, mind, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm picturing uh, like a horse with like the front legs of a horse, but the back half is like a big fishtail. <laughs> so yeah, that's, of... that's what they, they're technically mechanically, but just think of a okay. regu- re- just a regular horse okay. with, a, with a snorkel and goggles on. Okay, great. And it's not, this isn't part of its body. It's no, wearing no, it's, it's, an artificial yeah. snorkel it, 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 and goggles. Yeah, it's just, just like a snorkel and goggles like okay. from a shop. Well, that, that is very funny, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the funniest image I've ever thought of. So, <laughs> so while strictly speaking, they may be able to like properly swim, I just want them, like the image of them like, d- like doggy paddling their way over. <laughs> Doggy paddling very, very fast. Yeah, very, very, very fast, in fact. So these guys, their um, technical term is hippocampuses, but I just like to call them snorkel horses. <laughs> What's their names? Oh, uh, we haven't got around to that bit yet. Um, I mean, you can name your own if you want. All right. Mine's name is Mr. Ed. Okay, let me just, let me just write this down for the records. Um, Mr. Ed... Is being loaned to uh, Doctor Crud the Third. That's all right. And it's lucky you picked Doctor Ed because, as you can see, he's got a little sidecar for your. Oh look, Jenny, we don't even have to use the pocket. You can you can get your your stout into the fresh air. Yeah, there's like a like an attached um, like um, like one of those like um, like horses' heads on poles that like kids have. Well, kids used to have anyway. It's just one of those like attached. There's like a, a saddle with one of those just, um, just on the side uh, for you. Mm. All right, Olive. Uh, which ones do you fancy riding? You've got uh, this little, uh, this black one down here, or this um, like opalescent blue one. Why is the black one crying? I think I'm going to name it Bojack. <laughs> okay, Bojack goes to Olive, and I will note. Crying. <laughs> <laughs> it's all that salt in its eyes. Yeah. Maybe maybe the goggles are a bit too tight. All right, uh, Nesgrox, what do you fancy calling your snorkel horse? 
Oh, boy. Oh, I, I'm naming so many things these days. <laughs> it, it's like an opalescent blue. It's like, it like shimmers in the oh, light wow. of it. Um, I think I'm going to call you Michael. Michael Phelps. Okay. I, 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 <laughs> I thought you might have named it after that tiger that died horrifically that one time oh, last year. Oh, Richard. That was Richard. Uh, Richard. That was Richard? Okay. <laughs> I, I brought Richard back to life. He's okay. Uh, there's a lot of these different names. <laughs> I've got them all straight up here. They're all all my animals. <laughs> They're all Michael, Richard, and... <laughs> hmm. You know, if this blue one was a little bit prettier, it could be Tom Daly. <laughs> <laughs> I've also sent everyone a picture of a horse wearing flippers and goggles and a snorkel with an inner yeah. tube around its neck. Pause the okay. game, check the chat, <laughs> gotta see this. <laughs> Hang on. Oh Important things. Actually, yeah, that's perfect. Oh, wow. <laughs> and the fins. The fins on the hoofs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's lots of actually really good pictures of horses in swimming gear. Like horses with, like, oxygen <laughs> tanks. I'm seeing, like, a show pony with, like, a big oxygen tank on its back. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Look up horse with a snorkel. It'll be a good time for about ten minutes. <sighs> So um, after naming all your horses, um, Bob um, like puts uh, like scrolls um, on his like uh, flip like flip chart notepad. Yeah, let's say notepad. Uh, just that you know, the Mister Ed goes to Doctor Crud the Third. Bojack goes to Olive. Nez uh, Michael Phelps goes to Nez Grax. He's like, right, that's all you uh, signed out now. Be careful, guys. These are very um, sought after. Uh, creatures so just try not to you know try not to get them killed i know you're usually good for it i know you're good for it but you know just be careful don't worry we've got a guy here who can fix just about anyone with spare parts and i can bring people back from the dead yeah i'm not helpful <laughs> olive is also here <laughs> well, I, I did bring that one one guy who had a heart attack back from the dead so yeah. So, yeah, we, don't worry about the horses. They'll come back. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. That was you. Oh, good work, sir. Good work. But anyway. Um, yeah, we never these, saw them again. These, uh, the, these um, have great navigation. So basically, you just tell them where you need to go. As long as it's like an island or somewhere like watery, they'll know where it is. Obviously, they can't do land. But just tell them where you need to go, and they'll, they'll take you. They're like 10 times as quick as a ship. And can even take you underwater. They've got a little like bubble system that goes on the back. It's amazing, these creatures. Amazing. Don't let the snorkel fool you. All right. Cool. Uh, all right. I'll, I'll give it a go. Hi, hi Michael. Uh, I'm Nesgrax. Uh, we'd like you to take us to a brain town. Uh, New brain just, uh, town. New brain <laughs> town. <laughs> New. <laughs> uh, uh, that, the, uh, that Michael goes. Uh, actually, actually, just for funsies, everyone give me an animal handling check. Hmm. And this is where we find out that both Dr. Cred and Jenny are way too heavy for them. Twelve. Seven. Uh, let's see. Uh, six. Okay. All right, and there's Grax. You, in your, like, youth, spent a lot of time riding horses. Like, they're, they're like, slightly bulkier than normal, because, let's face it, dragonborns aren't exactly light. But you've um, ridden enough horses to know how to, how to mount uh, a snorkel horse fairly, fairly well. Um, Olive and Dr. Crud the Third. Um, Olive, you love being in water. Um, not so much on a horse. Um, so the horse and you are going to be a bit nervous for the journey, but um, don't worry about like any adverse things. Uh, Crud, your horse will hate you for the rest of its natural life. Because <laughs> um, even though you're in water and there is such thing as buoyancy, you're still damn heavy. And like, <laughs> like as soon as you get on, the horse is like... Rawr! <laughs> and then has to like paddle a lot harder. <laughs> so he's going to spend the entire time plotting your inevitable demise. I'm just trying to make you stronger. 
Okay, so one hateful horse, one happy horse, and one slightly uncomfortable horse. Got it. Okay, fast travel. Activate. Fuel. Loading screen. <laughs> so just, ima just imagine the fast travel things. We have the, um, the horses uh, start uh, paddling. You know. I'm, I'm imagining like a Mississippi river boat. <laughs> the legs just start spinning. Um, and we, we see um, the three like um, swoosh out of the, the boathouse into the open ocean. You three riding on their backs. Uh, one of them grumbling incessantly as Dr. Crud is just sat there having a good time where it's like, oh, I'd like to see you try and do this. Do you like fish jerky? Maybe that'll make you fa happier. Yeah, they'll be all right with some fish jerky. So they, they, they do not hate you now. They just resent you. I'll take it. Okay, so I said uh, it would take two weeks to get to New Brain Town uh, by ship. Um, these snorkel horses can manage it in about a day. So you, you take like a little break um, every couple of hours just to like, I don't know, does, does Jenny need like changing at all? Or is she like, can she do that herself? Oh, she could just do it right in the water. Oh, oh yeah. Good. You just hold her out. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, if we've got time, I'm going to do my familiar now. So I conjure up Olive Jr., my lizard familiar, and uh, she poofs onto my shoulder wearing her mini Jedi robe, just like Olive wears her Jedi robe. And she does like a little like... <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> also, it's always a pleasure to see Olive Jr., and now I have tongue of sun and moon, so I can talk to her. Hey, Ooh. Olive Junior, I <laughs> at her. <laughs> uh, Nesgrax, you want, do you want to take uh, responsibility of uh, voicing Olive Junior? Oh yeah, I mean, totally. She is, she is your familiar after all. <laughs> oh yeah, no, she has to talk, doesn't she? Like yeah. Oh, okay, hold on. Let me let me let me figure out a good voice for Olive Junior. Hello. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. <laughs> That'll work. Hello, Olive. It's me, Olive Junior. I'm, I'm your, I'm, I'm a familiar. It's good to see you again. Hello, my favorite member of the Fire Breathing Kittens. I'm talking in your language, so no one can hear the betrayal. <laughs> All right. Oh, I wish I was your familiar. You're so cool. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you were mine too, oh, my child. And then, like, I give her whatever food she wants and I just pet her and love on her and then I like glare at Nazgrax and give her back <laughs> <laughs> no I don't want to go <laughs> I know it's awful I'll see you again soon though and I like give her some crickets to go oh thank you Olive you're the best <laughs> can I call you Auntie Olive yes and I, I cry tears of joy and I match my horse <laughs> <laughs> who's still crying <laughs> the trip continues thusly. <laughs> <laughs> the DM is like, why? Why do I have to put up with these players? <laughs> yep. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, it's ju just like in like Dragon Age, where you just have like party members just like uh, chatting as you just randomly wander. Adds adds a nice flavor, you know. But now we know that Olive Junior secretly wants to be Olive's uh, familiar. Oh, it's no secret. I stole her in the Scars Bruce Redemption briefly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I imagine that as soon as Olive Jr. appeared, she forsake Neg Scrax and just jumped right onto Olive's shoulder. Yeah, if, <laughs> if she wasn't magically obligated to help Neg Scrax out, she'd be like, I'm out of here. Now I feel like I want to get the... My dog Stan out. <laughs> I should okay. just get Olive's... all my animals out right now. <laughs> Maybe yeah. wait till you're on dry land. <laughs> okay. Olive's not actually. She's like a good aunt. She's not a good mom. So I give you like way too much candy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So about after a day of traveling, um, with regu regular pee breaks um, and you know snack breaks, 
you know how it goes. You know how road trips go. But this is on water. So you start approaching um, an island and it's somewhat uh, colder than Nicomoy is. It's not like super cold, but it's not like warm anymore. The weather is slightly overcast. The sky's looking very grey. Um, but the grass itself, as you uh, get closer, looks quite green. And you start to um, approach the shoreline. There's nothing particularly built on the shore itself, just a small uh, a docking area. But there doesn't seem to be anyone around. But off in the distance, you do see um, what seems to be the edge of a small uh, town or village. Um, the horses will um, like deposit you on the side and start um, frolicking in the water. One of them um, stretching their back out. You go, oh, oh, you know what it's like when you've you've just like had to carry like like a sofa downstairs, um, or yeah, you've, be, you've been moving and you've just been carrying a load of boxes and you've just got to stretch afterwards and be like, oh, oh, I need to sit down. That's Mister Ed right now. Now, don't you feel stronger? Well, I mean, maybe not right now, but <laughs> we'll see for the journey back. But okay, so you're you stood on the dock of the island of, uh, well, the island itself I have not yet named, but we can, we can, that, that won't stop us. The village is called New Brain Town. It's on the, um, just in the distance. It's not too far away, maybe about a, an hour, hour and a half's walk. But you can uh, okay. c- certainly see like um, the just top of a, a little steeple. Mm-hmm. Look, ah, everyone. Yes. So we go later. Yeah, I see a church. I see a steeple. Open the church. See all the people. I wonder if there's people inside. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Twist. Uh, the walk to the village is, as I said, about an hour and a half. Uh, it's long. You walk uh, through like fields and meadows. Mostly, there are some uh, stone uh, walls that seem to be hand built, uh, just made of like rough hewn stone. They're not like uh, carved. In any way, it's just stone on stone on stone on stone. Um, it just uh, follows, marking like field boundaries, and there are some uh, like well-worn paths that you uh, follow. There are some there's some signage, uh, just a, like a, a wooden stake, like end in the ground that points towards the village. It just says uh, New Brain Town. Um, so you you start to follow that, um, start to wind a little bit. You walk through um, past some nice. Forestry areas. You uh, does anyone any of your characters have hay fever at all? Not sure it will have come up, but now's the chance. <laughs> Should we roll for allergies? <laughs> roll for allergies. Yeah, go for it. I think that would be very, very bad for Doctor Crud to have with his uh, extremely long nose. But also I, very I, funny, Doctor Crud. Please make me an allergy roll. Oh crap! Actually, no. Actually, uh, we'll just call it a Constitution saving throw all around. Oh, okay. Just to stop sneezing too much. Thanks, Olive. <laughs> For what? Ooh. Thank the DM. I got a five. It's us against him, remember? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how that works. I have a 15. Me too. Okay, um, Olive and Crud, you you walk through the um, the flowers, um, smelling them. Uh, Crud, you stick your, your snoot right up in them and just take a big... <laughs> Big sniff. It smells smells fresh. Smells nice. Nesgrax is suffering a bit more, however, as uh, spores are starting to get into your snout, and you're like, oh, uh, sneeze, and my, your eyes start burning a bit, and you're severely missing your mushroom beard because that tended to ward off <laughs> those sorts of spores. I think I should oh. um, sneeze fire. Oh yes. He- Please. Hey, hey, Nezzy, eat one of these and you'll, you'll be, you'll feel right as rain. What, what's this? Oh, this is just a, just as a, an egg. Go for it. Okay. And I eat it. All right. What is it really? Uh, it's the spider egg that he picked up the last episode. Nezgrax has now grown two inches. He is fully healed and his mouth is glowing. <gasps> I'm six feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted to be six feet tall. You have no idea how happy I am. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Crud. Oh, you're more than welcome. 
What's wrong with my mouth? What's going on here? There's like light coming oh. out of it. Yeah, that'll go away in about a half hour. Okay. Will the height go away? Nope. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, oh. I'm going to have to get new trousers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 or Nezzy, just, just, uh, I would recommend no magic. Start now. Okay. I, okay. I can contain myself. It's no problem. Okay. No magic. <laughs> right. Normal person. Normal person. I was a normal person for like 40 years. I think I'll be okay. Here we go. Normal person. Hey, okay, I'm, I'm <laughs> Nesgrax. Hey, uh, how you doing? I, well, you I, don't have to change your accent. What? Your hey. accent's not magical. Oh, okay. It's, it's kind of hard for me to remember not to use magic when I'm being myself. I think it's better if I use an accent. Oh. And it's like it's like I'm a different person. I'm like non magical normal person. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll have a pen here in my hand, and when I see you about to use magic, I'm gonna stick you with it, and that way you don't use the magic. Okay. Oh, oh okay, Doctor Crad the Third. I'll be so. the normal person, non magical, <laughs> so you don't have to stab me with that pen. All right. If I don't hear that exact accent. Come out of your mouth, you're getting the stabby stab. No problem, butterino. <laughs> <laughs> the conversation continues as you um the conversation continues as you walk through the fields. Um Nesgrax now more or less like stuffed up. He doesn't have to like sneeze any anymore. You've managed to find like two like wadges of cloth. You've just shoved them up your nostrils. And um, so you don't. Uh, sneeze fire on too many fields. Um, oh, how, however, Dr. With- Crud, Dr. Crud the Third, I just realized something. Is my glowing mouth going to come across as magical to people? Ah, uh, it, it's already gone. Oh, it was good. an hour's walk. Great. Normal person. Normal <laughs> person. Well, I don't know about that because we, we, we did have a little bit of time uh, walking prior to getting towards these uh, specific fields. So I will say 29, well, 28 and a half minutes after uh, Nesgrax's mouth started glowing, you arrive at like the boundary of New Brain Town and there are some uh, farmers hanging out, um, like leaning against the fence just um, with a, a, bit, a bit of uh, wheat in their mouth uh, with like straw hats on, they've got pitchforks. Uh, they got some overalls that just hanging out and go, is it me? Or is that, that guy's uh, mouth glowing? He goes, you know what? It may be, actually. Uh, and uh, you, you spend uh, like uh, uh, another minute walking towards him and go, oh, yeah, you know what? I think it might be glowing, is it? Is it one of them foreigners they keep telling us about? Shut your mouth, damn it. Shut your mouth. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> um, oh. However, as, as you uh, like get within about thirty feet of them, the ma- uh, the magic wears off and your mouth just stops glowing. And as you walk past them, uh, one of them just goes, "No, actually, no. He's just must be just shiny." Mm. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, he he shines when he sweats. Don't worry about him. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Because I'm a normal person. I, <laughs> we all glisten a bit when we sweat a bit, especially me. It's the scales. Yeah. Well, far be it from us to, um, you know, deride someone for, for, for sweating a bit. You know, we spend all our days in the sun. Well, whatever sun there is. But are you guys going into the, the village for something? Yeah, we heard that there's a good cafe nearby that serves really nice oat lattes. Yeah, the fanciest ones we could find. We heard about it and we just had to try them. Do you know where the fanciest, most delicious, extravagant food in town is? Well, I don't know about no oat lattes, but... If, I mean, if you're aiming for, like, extravagant stuff, there's a load 
down in town. Let me. I was actually going to say, like, you know, if if you weren't like aiming for that sort of stuff, I wouldn't bother just because there's so much like extravagant stuff going on. There's like this big uh, like party today, but but I'm sure you knew that. I mean, you know, you're obviously not from from you know this is that village, but we got people coming from all over the island. Yeah, yeah, of course we we knew that. Uh, can you remind me of who is at the center of all that? The well, center? Well, I mean, we are just humble farmers. We don't know much. We spend our time in the fields and shear sheep and all that jazz. But I mean, you just just wander into the village if you want. Um, but you know, is are you sure your mouth wasn't glowing? My mouth. How ridiculous. I... That's correct. Just open your mouth wide, show the man that you're not glowing at all. Oh, okay. <laughs> Why did I look? <laughs> I should have just closed my eyes when I, saw, I heard that coming. I should be like, okay, close your eyes. <laughs> uh, he's like, Phew. all right, no, no need to... No need to show off. I mean, your 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 breath is way worse than mine is. What? That's. Uh, yeah, because I'm. A I'm just kidding. Person. I'm just kidding. It's oh. it's fine. Come on, go on. Ah, uh, like, oh, come on. It's, uh, <laughs> gen- gentle, normal person ribbing. Delightful. Would either of you gentlemen be interested in having an egg? They're very good. What's this? Are you at an egg? Yeah. <laughs> oh, not sure if we're fancy enough for them eggs. Oh, you'll be fine. Dr. Crow will hand them each an egg as they walk away. Oh, yeah, you, you hear them as you as you walk away. And they're like, oh, I can't wait to tell the family about this. A real egg. They, they eat these like, fancy things like you up at the big house. Um, as you um, make your way into town. Sure, you know, uh, um, I was going to say sure as shit, but there's definitely a, <laughs> there's definitely a less sweary way to say that. Um, uh, wouldn't sure as you anything, know it? Wouldn't you know it? Yeah. Um, as as the farmers mentioned, there is um, quite a lot of activity going on in the village uh, square. So just to uh, paint you a quick picture, um, if you imagine like uh, cobbled uh, streets, there's a fountain in the centre with li- little fishes. Um, spouting water um, around the place. There's um, a load of um, like old um, like brickwork uh, shops um, either side of it. There are lots of um, awnings, which are like the um, the outside like fabric roofs um, over like um, places like the cafe, um, and which have got a load of seats uh, set outside. There is um, a lot of hustle and bustle. Um, around the places, people um, like walking to shops, leaving shops, um, you know, eating. Um, there are some uh, carts which are um, trundling the way up uh, the high street, um, and then just on the far side, you do see a hill uh, winding up um, to a large house um, on the hill, which is still a little ways in the distance, but you can see it's got some uh, very fancy uh, like walls and. Um, two very large ornate gates in front of it. But for the time being, we're uh, still just in the village, um, in the hustle and bustle, as people uh, seem to be gearing up for what seems to be some sort of celebration. Wow, look at all the people. It's quite a sight. Lovely. Yeah, all we gotta do is figure out who's in the center of this, and we probably got our shapeshifter or the person who's living in the extravagant house on the hill is probably our shapeshifter yeah that would have been my guess the house on the hill that seems like a decadent place for a decadent person not like me normie Just McNorm a face guy. <laughs> yeah so uh, I'm, I'm here and you want to go to the house yeah. yeah maybe we should get something from the festival like balloons or ribbons and then arrive at the house and say hey you were supposed to help us with balloon and ribbon duty you're slacking come on i like that plan 
Good plan, Olive. What do you say, Olive Jr.? And she goes, <laughs> that's what everybody hears, but Olive can hear her saying, like, you're so smart, Olive. Oh, wait, hold on. You're so smart, Olive. <laughs> oh, I want to be like you. <laughs> I feed her so many delicious desserts. She's going to get so fat and have diabetes. But I'm the aunt, not the mom. And I'm like, here, have a cake. <laughs> and then Nesgrax is like, what are you doing to my daughter, familiar? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, candies? <laughs> okay, that's enough, Olive. <laughs> Olive Jr. is getting a little heavy on my shoulder. <laughs> A little mechanic I'm adding in to this uh, portion of the adventure. While you're on the island, um, I'm starting what's called in, in other role-playing scenarios as a clock. If or well, if or when uh, you do or say anything that uh, the vill like um, people in the village or in the house will would consider untoward, then I will fill in a level of clock, fill in like enough segments of the clock. And they will uh, progressively become become less helpful towards you. Okay. So, like you know, like being like disturbing the peace, or you know, um, saying anything you shouldn't, or well, basically like saying exactly what you want. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, uh, let's say one one person does uh, wander over to you. Um, he seems to be holding some uh, like leaflets. Um, or like the local tailoring um, slash haberdashery um, business. It's like, did I hear right? Are you here for the, you here for the party up at the up at the house? Absolutely, that's right. It's just like I've never met anyone who was allowed in there before. Like they they say like you know only uh, like it's all like very hush hush, very invitation only. Like only you know anyone who's anyone. Like in this island, as a, you know, as you'll know, you're from one of the other them other like villages. Like anyone who's anyone, like in this entire island is going to be there. And like apparently, you need like an invitation, so like most of us folks, you know, can't go out there. So you must be like really important to be able to you know get get your invitation. Huh. Speaking of, you don't appear to be um, dressed for the occasion. If you wouldn't. And uh, subtly, like, tries to hand you a leaflet and goes, you can get, you know, 15% off your uh, your first tailoring experience at uh, old uh, ra <laughs> Raggedash's Haberdashery. <laughs> Hot damn. Well, thank you. Uh, thank, thank, thank you, sir. This is... Yeah, Dr. Kret Boksum. Yeah, wow. Thank, thank you, sir. This will come in handy for us normal people. Oh, you're very welcome, sir. Okay. Uh, that person wanders <laughs> off. Their job done. Okay, guys. Let's go take advantage of this amazing discount and get some new clothes, which doesn't excite me very much. I'm just a well, normal person who doesn't I'm care a... about clothing. <laughs> Do they sell cargo shorts? <laughs> don't, don't you think we need to get a tickets first before? I mean, there's no point in getting uh, all gussied up if we can't even get in. We're more likely to get an invitation if we look like we're important. A, 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 a tear rolls down <laughs> in Greg's face. I, I'm sure the, the, the invitations have already been sent. Oh, maybe we need to ambush some people coming for the party and grab their tickets. And then blend in with our excellent outfits. Sounds oh. like a plan. Sounds like you guys really, really want to go get gussied up, so let's go get gussied up. I don't want to get gussied up, but I support my crying friend. He reminds me of a certain <laughs> horse. <laughs> oh, Alan wants another dress, we know. <sighs> I feel like everyone else <laughs> wants to dress Olive up, and Olive does not, but she's going along with it. Okay, we go to Ragger Dasher's Haberdashery. <laughs> I was going to say Radagast, but I'm fairly confident that's still um, copyright of Tolkien <laughs> right now. <laughs> so we'll, 
we'll go ragged raggedasher okay so uh you wander into the the haberdashery which is um just uh behind where uh, this the person who handed you the leaflet was it's uh it's quite a small um intimate atmosphere um there are uh, each wall is lined with like pre-made like uh suits and uh dresses and formal wear and um as you walk in a little uh bell tinkles above the doorway and a very um old, like wizened um person about let's say j- just shy of five feet tall um wanders through so if you can imagine um a bit a bit taller than a halfling um just like um wisp- wispy white hair there's a um like a tape measure on the neck and like a very uh, fancy waistcoat um arms rolled up to the elbows arms rolled up no sleeves rolled up to the elbows how would you roll your arm up <laughs> very painfully. carefully like very beetlejuice carefully, very painfully at the end yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. so the, the sleeves are rolled up to the elbows um this uh, person might uh, Walks up to goes, welcome, welcome to the, um, rather, rag- what's my name again? Rakadash's haberdashery. Please, please come in. Um, I can see you from, uh, you must be out of town. Is here for the, the party up at the top of the hill? Yes, uh, I am Dr. Crud. I'm sure you've heard of me. Oh, I, I'm afraid I have not had the pleasure, sir. But it is wonderful to meet you now. Well, have you at least heard of Nesgrags? I mean, everybody's heard of Nesgrags. Oh, come on. I, I'm just a normal person, Dr. Crud. Hi, I'm Nesgrax. You can call me Nessie. Hey, this place sure is fancy. I bet a fancy person would be very excited to be in here. I'm sure they would. I mean, something... Think- I, I must say, though, something horrible must have happened to you on your journey over for you to arrive without the appropriate formal wear, but I am glad you chose me. I mean, there are a number of uh, choices available to you on the high streets and uh, gestures outside. You can see outside there are like five different tailoring shops just in this square alone. Yes. But I, I am very glad you're here right now. Uh, let's get you measured up. And oh, you've got one of the leaflets. Wonderful! I I can give you that that discount after after we finished. Uh, so who would like to go first? I would like to go first. I want one of your latest fashions, please. <laughs> I will take okay. one fashion. One Thanks. fashion, please. <laughs> okay. Um. So first things first. Um. When I uh, while I um tie together these um tape measures, um. How do you feel about tweed? Where with it? Tweed with it. Fan. Wonder. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. So uh, t- ties together the two, the two tape measures to reach around uh, uh, your size. Um, and like starts measuring you up um, for um, a, 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 a nice uh, three-piece suit. This is going to take a, a little while to uh, complete just due to the size. But he's very good at his job um, and, you know, wouldn't um, be able to survive in this competitive atmosphere if he wasn't. Um, oh, I also need a latest fashion for my daughter. Oh, of course. Of course. Um, would you like uh, matching uh, matching suits oh. or would you like... Uh... Duh. Hey, we, I, I have to ask, sir. You know, do, do uh, forgive me. I have yeah. no preference. Oh, all all four of us matching. Oh, that's even better. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yes. One latest fashion for all of us. Me, my daughter, Nesgrax, and Olive. Very well, sir. Well, the good news is that uh, fashion has not changed much in the last mm, two or three centuries. So uh, I will very quickly be able to sort you out with all the necessary um, items um, and uh, uh, starts uh, starts working away <laughs> with a uh, with a like sewing machine, um, and like his his hands is a blur of motion as he puts together these uh, matching uh, tweed suits for everyone. It's a it's a three piece, so you get the waistcoat, you get the jacket, you get the you get the uh, suit. Um, and while he's while he's working, he's like, could I also interest you in any um, 
of this, these uh, hunting boots. They're uh, very supportive, um, nice and water repellent, obviously. Um, they would go very well with the uh, attire. Um, otherwise, we have uh, some Oxfords, um, if you're interested, or Brogues. Um, but I think, uh, looking down at your shoes, that uh, maybe you would be uh, well, well suited uh, just to get those uh, traveling boots off. You know, obviously, you don't want to scuff the floors of the house up, up on the hill. That would be obviously the highest folly. Four hunting boots, please. Uh-huh. By four, do you mean four pairs or four? One pair for each of us. <laughs> okay, so four pairs. Sorry, you know, ambiguity and all that. Four hey, pairs. silly question. Do you have enough material or the right size shoes for this little lizard on my shoulder? Oh, five pairs. I'm so sorry. I forgot about Olive's Jr. Yeah, we need five pairs of everything. Don't worry, sir. I'm sure. I'm sure we can. We can sort something out. Um, uh, so uh, wanders into the back <laughs> and goes. Uh, so you hear him through um, like a, a sheet, um, like at the back. It's just it's like a curtain, um, just separating the two areas. Goes. Do we have any tiny boots around? And it's, someone just goes. Yeah, I think so. I think we got a pair from. Uh, what was the name? Um, you know that that tiny little um, imp that came through a couple of couple of uh, weeks ago. I think we made up like two, but they just disappeared. Didn't come and collect. He's like, "Oh yes, okay, we can go go use those." Uh, pokes his head back through and goes, "Good news, sir. We do have um, a small pair of boots on standby." So, oh, um, that's great. I will just and take a, a few moments for everybody. <laughs> ah, wonderful. Actually. Sir, are you sure a top hat is quite the right style to go with this particular ensemble? Would uh, not a flat cap be more appropriate? Top hat. Top hat. I have um, feelings about top hats from someone that I knew long ago. I think we should take the flat caps, Dr. Crud. All right, all right. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be pushing your buttons there. I had no idea. It's okay. Of course, do not worry, sir. Of course, we will. Um, we will, you know, do. We we will cater to your your every whim. But I I would personally suggest a flat cap to go with this particular ensemble for you know, as, as you. I'm sure you are aware. You no. Know, um, Black tie tends to go with a top hat, and then the tweed hunting suit. And you uh, traditionally require a, a flat cap to go with it. But if Sir wishes for a top hat, then Sir wishes for a top hat. Well, he ne- Nez- Nezzy wants a flat cap, so we'll go with flat cap. Now, what do you have in capes? <laughs> <laughs> well, the good news is, Sir, we have um, an impressive range. I would uh, go for maybe a half cape. Um, just to go over a single shoulder, it uh, shows, um, shows power and also means, um, you don't have to have a full cape on because let's face it, they're a little old fashioned, even for us. One for everybody. One shoulder cape for everybody. Let's, uh, and you just see like a, a maybe a, a gnome in the corner, just like, like ringing everything up on the, on the till. It's going, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Anything else, Nezzy? Can you think of anything else we might need? I'm happy with the chosen items. I don't have any real preferences about my clothing style. I consider it all completely utilitarian. Oh, we need gloves, don't we? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Good choice. All the, all the while, you see just like a vein bulging in Nesgrax's <laughs> temple. <laughs> Looks like he's ready to explode. <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll fast forward this a little bit um, to get you all suited and booted um, for um, for the, <laughs> the the party up at the house on the hill. Um, you leave, let's see, let's see, one, two, three, four, five 
football suits plus boots. Uh, we'll call that uh, in total 10,000 gold. Oh, God. Dr. Crud puts the 10,000 gold on the counter. Oh, good. I'm glad someone has money because I just spent it all prepaying rent. <laughs> Oh, oh, don't worry. I got you, Olive. I know how much you absolutely love new clothes, so this is my <laughs> gift to you. <laughs> Thank you. Minus 10k. And you leave the uh, the tailoring shop and the doorbell like dings again as you um, leave into the back into the, uh, the square. And j just as a fun aside, um, I, I did make a load of different uh, shops just in case you were fancied investigating. <laughs> uh, so aside from the like the haberdashers, uh, there's a place that only sells riding equipment. Um, they don't have any goggles for horses. Um, there's a place that sells gar gardening supplies. If you fancy any pitchforks or trowels or um, any grass seed, um, there is a cafe. If you're interested, there are people sat outside. Um, once again, with a, a, like umbrellas over the tables, um, they're all dr eating uh, scones and drinking drinking tea. Um, there's a sign outside which just says um, "open from uh, two till five p.m. every day, apart from Sunday." Um, there's a oh, there, there's a, there's a uh, place that's um, seems seems to be some sort of like a butler for hire um, area. So if if uh, Sarah, madam, wishes um, for a butler for the weekend. They can go and hire one, like like hiring a cleaner, but a lot fancier. Um, there's a place that uh, it's like a, a like a pet shop, but exclusively deals in swans. So if you if you need a, a pair of like sw they sell they sell swan goggles. So like if you're <laughs> if you have um, you know your swan in your lake, and they go diving, and you don't want them to ruin their eyes, that you've got a little pair of goggles. Put on the swan, and obviously bow bow ties for the swans as well. You know, got to have some sense of decorum, right? Bow ties for the swans. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and of course, uh, there is a cheesemonger's. Of course. Of course, of course. To add add a little bit more flavour into uh, what's going on in this particular <laughs> village square. So the plan at the moment, as far as I understand it, uh, are we going to ambush some people as they queue up outside the, the big house on the hill? Yeah, I think that we what we need to do, guys, is between here and the house on the hill, we need to set an ambush. First, we got to change back into our regular clothes so we don't get our new clothes all mussed up. And then we knock them out, tie them up take their tickets, get chased back into our good stuff, <laughs> and then get up there. How's that sound? Great idea. Let's do it. I like it. Team player. Okay, so uh, there is the, the like, dirt, it's, it's more, no, uh, there is, like, one paved road through this, and it goes up to the house on the hill. Um, the rest are all, like, dirt tracks um, around the edge of the village, um, there is like a queue of like um, horses and carriages that go up um, to the house on the hill, but you can see off um, towards maybe the come from the south off to the maybe the uh, northwest side. You do see um, maybe a carriage or two um, going past some forested areas, um, which seem to be heading towards um, the village. So they would be prime ambush. Uh, locations, should you wish to take advantage of it. And while we're doing that, I would like to go rent a butler for each of us, if it's less than 500 gold, because... Oh, it's not. I feel like... Uh, for the day? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright, I don't have hey, enough hey, money hey, to... Hey, hey, the, these are butlers that have like graduated from like the Northern School of Butlery. Like, so how they, they know what they're worth. <laughs> I, I, I want to I want to find a price list for butlers. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, so I just dropped ten k. I can't. I'm not going to pay for a butler too. Okay, I was just like, you know, who's always around finery? Butlers. Butlers. But that's okay. Not yeah. enough money. There is a butler menu just like outside. If you. Oh. 
course there is. Is Chauncey, is, is, is there like an item called Chauncey? <laughs> no. No, okay. he's one of, one of a kind. I, I definitely actually, check actually, out the list. No, of- it, 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 I mean, it would make sense. I mean, he will have gone to that particular butler school, so he may well have been hired. Maybe it was like a franchise. Maybe there's one in like Nicomoy direction. Okay, don't worry. But, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to bring Chauncey into this. <laughs> well, shall we go beat up some rich folk? Yeah, we hide alongside the road if there's like a canyony part where we can hide above it. That works. Um, yeah, we can have like um, like a more of, well more of a grassy knoll, I guess, um, with some oh, trees no. behind it. Then you can like lay on top of and just like peek your heads over as like a, a carriage. Um, goes past it's got uh, two regular horses uh drawing it uh the, the carriage itself is like um inlaid with silver and it's got a let's say like say a purple like felt roof um and you see uh t- well you see uh, like just through the gap in the door um two people um just sat there one of them is very fat one of them is very thin um you can hear them like laughing and like Nesgrax, you specifically can hear def- they're, they're definitely quaffing something inside. Quaffing something? Yeah. Quaffing is I fancy th- drinking. Oh, for, okay, for sure. For if you not au okay fait with the parlance. <laughs> um, How many people were inside? Uh, just two. Okay, guys, pass on this one. There's not enough. Hmm. Well, we don't. It could be just one ticket for the group, though. That's true. Could be fun. Either way. I say we take these guys, and if we need more, we'll get more. Hey, okay. hey, first of all, first of all, are we sure there's not a baby on the carriage? Perception check for baby on board. <laughs> Stickers. <laughs> Go for it. Nine. I also rolled a nine. Oh, okay, I will. Um, that's going to be a dirty 20. Okay, um, Olive and Nesgrax, you like, look um, all around for the signs of a baby on board sign. No, no sign of a baby on board sign. However, Crud, um, you aim your uh, trunk towards the carriage and you do not, you definitely do not smell any baby poo. All right, no babies on board. We're clear. Uh, and you, you don't hear any like screaming or crying. You do hear a bit of sniffling, but that's just from Nesgrax. Oh, there's going to be a lot of screaming and crying here very soon. Mm. Um, I have slow fall, so I just fall in front of the carriage to stop its movement, right? That'll help my friends. So I, like, jump off the high thing we were on. It, it, it's not that high. It's more of a, just a, a small mound. The, the grassy knoll, I run and I leap. And I aim for in front of the horses. If I get trampled, I get trampled. But, you know, whatever. I'm, you know, I'll give them enough time to stop. But I'm, it's my goal is to stop the carriage. Don't run over the alligator. It's okay. The, 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 there's, a, there's a classic grift that relies directly on this tactic. Um, so if you, like, um, pick up, like, a rock or something, you put it in front of the, the carriage wheel. It hits the, hits the wheel, stops the carriage. And then you lie down in front of it like, oh, I'm so injured. Oh. <laughs> okay, I do that. It's kind of like the Russian dash cam footage where someone just kind of like bumps into your yeah, car you, you and lays on into, it. Yeah, you're, you're stood still and they, they jump into your <laughs> into your car. Um, however, Olive, I, I will require just a quick performance check um, oh, just to no. check your acting. Look, Don't worry too much about it. Right. Dr. Crud is going to give her advantage. By running over there and going, oh my lord, she's been hit. I'm a doctor. She is gravely injured. I can tell because I'm a doctor. Fantastic. <laughs> I have a witness. <laughs> <laughs> well, with a negative one performance, it is a 13 overall. Okay. So- is that with advantage? Yes. Thank you. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not the finest piece of acting ever available but then again you're not an actor but um it is certainly enough um for the people inside to like hop out one of them is quite a large rotund 
uh, man. The other's a very uh, dainty uh, woman accompanying him. Um, and they just hop out, and the, the man's like, what, what seems, What's happened here? Oh. Ow. <laughs> you hit her. I'm so injured. <laughs> I'm dying. <laughs> oh, and he just kind of like blusters and doesn't really know what to do. At which point, Dr. Crud's <laughs> going to walk behind him and hit him in the back of the head. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Uh, uh, just give me a roll to hit. Um, a roll say, to hit? Just say, like, one hit and he goes down. Okay. That's going to be uh, an 18 to hit. Okay. Yep. He, he goes down just, like, straight up unconscious. You whack him in the back of the noodle and uh, he collapses to the ground. The woman screams and... Um, like starts trying to run off. Tackle. Uh, <laughs> I, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll take off my backpack and I'll go rope. Get to work. And the rope shoots out and wraps her up. Okay. Um, I'm, I'll say those two things like happen more or less at the same time. So the rope like slithers out, um, like the coils around her body, and at that point, crud, like body slams into. her. <laughs> Um, <laughs> crashing her to the ground. Oh, I should say she can make a, a dexterity saving throw if she if she wants. Uh, no, it's all right. She's very um, concerned by getting chased by a giant elephant man. Cool. I don't think she will have uh, spotted the rope. Uh, but I, I feel will mention. Guilty. Uh, yeah, she does have a bit of a broken wrist now. Oh, oh no. gosh. I... Doctor Doctor Crud puts a med kit on it. She's fine. Yeah. Uh, she she like uh, turns to look up at you. Go, what do you want? Your tickets. <laughs> fine, fine, take them, take them. They're in my bag. Just please don't kill us. Oh, we're not gonna kill you. We're just gonna put you somewhere till the party's over, and then you can go home. Is that a fair? We we'll, we'll, ju- we'll just leave. We'll leave. Uh, just please. No, we can't. We, no, we can't risk you coming back to the house. Say, all right. These guys took our tickets. They're not us. And then there's going to be a lot of trouble. So, no, I'm going to put you to sleep. And when you wake up, we'll all be gone. I mean, she's not going to be super happy about it, but she's not in, she's not in the position. She's not, she's not in the position of power right now, is she? No. No. So that's what we do. We put them to sleep. Okay. Sedative. Okay. Uh, do you steal their carriage? Yes. Okay. So you just like leave them in the woods. Uh, we're gonna find a safe spot to put to stash them, and yeah, you know, dis, uh camouflage oh. them so they can't be seen. I I could cast invisibility on them. How long will that last? An hour. I think we need it longer than that. Save save that. Okay. We could just put like bushes on them and put them in bushes and put leaves on them and stuff like that. They'll be fine. So, yeah, okay. Uh, you 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 put them both to sleep, um, and like stash them uh, like in the woods, maybe like underneath uh, like some overgrown roots of a big tree. Uh, you just like yeah, li- li- like uh, line up some sticks against the roots, cover it in uh, cover it in leaves just to cover them up. Um, and you maybe leave like a, a book to read, just so that just so oh, they don't get bored. They're tied up. They're not going to wake up. Uh, well, if never they know. do, work. Yeah. it's a book mm. saying like, like eat the rich or something. <laughs> <laughs> How to cook the rich? Yeah. Oh, I feel kind of bad for having done this, and then now there's two invitations, so I know that I'm going to have to do this again. And I'm like, ah, oh, gosh, ah, oh, gosh. I th- think. I mean, oh, we actually haven't looked at the invitations yet. It might just be one. Yeah. We open her purse and look at look inside for the an invitation or invitations or see how the tickets work. This um, does not yes. feel good. <laughs> <laughs> um, inside um, the the lady's bag, there is um, a large uh, like cream envelope with a wax seal on it, um, which has been broken, um, and like inside is like a, a very nice like a three size inv- invitation with like um golden writing on it which says um 
we hereby um, invite uh, Lord and La Lady Featherby um, to uh, what did I call it? Um, <laughs> we hereby invite uh, Lord and Lady Featherby to uh, Farthing Manor on the Hill um, on the date this story takes place at um, say sundown. Um, like this, you know, this pass entitles um, the you know above named and their butler um, slash butleress slash servant to um, enter without um, delay. Nescratch, do you want to be a butler? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, yeah, no problem. Wait, wait. So you just you just looked at the two of us and you were like, I think the alligator's gonna be a more convincing rich person than this former noble. <laughs> well, like that... <laughs> the alligator's the only one that's a female here. Oh, that's true. It is an invitation for a couple. Uh, yeah. Um. Hey, and he's the couple rotund. could be two guys. All right. Do you want to be the? Do you want to be the butler? I think I'm not going to... <clears throat> metagaming, I don't have the charisma to pull off being a noble, and not metagaming, I think the former noble might be better at it. <laughs> All right, Nezzy, you're my wife then. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to cast um, Seeming on myself, which allows me to change my appearance. Um uh do, do, do. yeah i can change i can be one foot shorter or taller or thin or fatter in between i can choose the body type but i have to have the same basic arrangement of limbs <laughs> so i should be able to turn into <laughs> a, a, a woman okay. um, i mean like if you uh, were a the, guy the... and they had a problem with two guys i'd i'd be i'd feel better about beating them up and <laughs> well it's just the what? the invitation is addressed to lord and lady yeah, yeah, does say lady, so not okay. lord and lord. I mean, I could try to be like, you know, offended or something. <laughs> if they misgender me, but but it's easier just to just to change my appearance. And I think Nesgrex wants to, so he wants to change himself into. I'm trying to think of what would be like a good thing that like Nesgrex would want to change into. I think he wants to look like. The character Diane Lockhart from The Good Wife. If anybody's ever seen The Good Wife, she's a tall, elegant looking woman with sort of stern features, but very charismatic. So, yeah, I turn into Diane Lockhart. <laughs> ah. Okay. Oh, Christine Bransky. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Thank you. <laughs> you do kind of look like a dragonborn. <laughs> she does she has a little bit of like a dragonborn thing going on yeah oh you've just got a very strong jawline yeah yeah so i'm not i'm not a dragonborn now i'm a i'm a human but okay christina bransky or christine mm -hmm. bransky okay. whichever one it is yeah all right now that nezzy's got boobs let's get into our formal clothes again and head on up good thinking dr crud the third See, I'm doing, I like this accent better. I'm doing my a, a new voice for this this new character. That's a noble. Yeah, <laughs> Doctor Krebs pokes him with the with it. Oh, because... sorry. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> there you go. I like the voice though. Keep it. Uh, Nesgrax, just a quick question: Does uh, seeming physically change your body, or does it just make it look like your body has changed? Good question. My spell is in an awkward place in regards to my microphone. One sec. I can help. Uh, just because if it physically changes your body, then your suit is going to fit a bit awkwardly. Illusory. Uh, if it's just illusory, then um, it doesn't actually change your uh, body type. So it, it'll still look a bit weird because you're physically wearing it on your dragonborn self. But, I mean, no one's going to question Lady Featherby, are they? Mm -hmm. If you use this spell to appear thinner than you are, the hand of someone who reaches out to touch you would bump into you while it was seemingly still in midair. 
But no one would question a lady's waist, so I think you're fine. No. <laughs> well, also, it looks like I can change the, the clothing. Because it says, like, mm -hmm. for example, you can use the spell to add a hat. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, okay, so you just have to be careful perfectly. not to, like, just to not, like, touch anyone. Otherwise, they're going to go, your hand is rather scaly. Or maybe they wouldn't. Maybe they wouldn't. They're too polite. I, I'll, I'll get away with it. I'll come, I'll come up with an excuse. But yeah, no, I yeah. look yeah. perfect. Okay. And no one's going to correct Diane Lockhart. No, she's they very intimidating. Dare. Yeah, Wouldn't dare. Mm -mm. Okay, so let's say you, um, uh, with your invitation sealed, um, Nesgrex is now looking like Diane Lockhart from The Good Wife. Um, you hop in to the, the carriage, um, um, Olive being the butler. Um, you sit up front with the, the horses, which were previously going by themselves. Um, but you sit up there with the reins um, and steer them towards um, the house on the hill, joining the queue as they go. Um, you, get, you eventually get to the gates where someone is waiting there with a clipboard um, who just says, Oh, good evening, sir, addressing Olive. Good evening, uh, Adam. We're talking to <laughs> Olive. Nezzy. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Sorry. <laughs> I was, I was actually Excuse me. Olive, but... <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought you were still talking to our servant. Yes. Hello. <laughs> we're pleased to be here. Honored indeed. I'm Diane. No, Featherby. Lady Featherby. Ah, yes. Yes, madam. We uh, have you here. Excellent, excellent. Um, just uh, go right on in. Uh, the valet will uh, take your... Uh, carriage and uh, park it for the night. Um, as you can see, we've got the, the red carpet laid out for all the guests. Um, you'll be shown, um, you'll be met at the door and uh, be taken inside for the um, for the occasion. So let me just say, um, on behalf of um, Lord and Lady Farthing, um, welcome to the manor and I hope you have a good evening. Well... Thank you. I'm sure we will. Come, Lord Featherby. Servant. <laughs> Unnamed servant. Coming, honey dearest. <laughs> Young dragon. Tiny lizard. Yes, um. Okay, we, we uh, enter. So we, uh, we, um, wheel the carriage up to the valet spot. Um, a, a kind of a, uh, I don't know, 16, 17 year old um, boy in like a tux jumps up, uh, takes the carriage um, from you. Another one opens the door for Lord and, La the Lord and Lady Featherby uh, for you to step out onto the red carpet. Um, Olive can like hop down and uh, follow you two in to um, Farthing Manor on the Hill. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is where we'll. we'll is where we will end things for this half of the Fire Breathing Kittens podcast. Ooh. <laughs> I'm not sure why I'm doing that. It's not particularly spooky right now. <laughs> Either way, um, thinking about it, the 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 clothes uh, we, you guys bought were pretty pricey. But you know what's not pricey? Leaving a review. In fact, nice. leaving a review is absolutely free. Is that not right? Oh, it is. Free. That's absolutely right. And you know what else is free? If you do leave us a review, if, well, if it's a particularly nice review, and we're glad to say that the vast majority of them are, we will read them out on here in any voice you choose. Actually, yeah, if you could, if you could specify like a random voice or accent, that'd be funny. <laughs> just like, <laughs> just like at the bottom, <laughs> it's like, read this out in like a deep, booming voice, and like, yes, we will. <laughs> Anyways, with that aside, uh, joining us for this half of the Five Breathing Kids podcast were Lord Featherby, also known as Dr. Crud III. Hot, hot, cheerio, and all that rot. Lady Featherby, also known as Nesgrax. Oh, I can't wait for the festivities to begin. <laughs> and also the help, also... <laughs> 
previously known as Olive. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> we'll see you in a bit. We hope that you're enjoying this episode of the Fire Breathing Kittens podcast. Please leave us a review on iTunes.com. If you leave us a review, we'll read it on air. It's fun listening to the words of your review get read by the characters you know and love. So go to iTunes.com and leave us a review today. Can you think of someone who might enjoy this podcast? Please share it with them. Is their birthday coming up? A special anniversary? Would you like us to wish them a happy day on your behalf? You can arrange for us to read your shout out on air at firebreathingkittenspodcast.com through our partnership with the website Buy Me a Coffee. Do you enjoy reading books? You can find paperbacks and ebooks based on our adventures on Amazon.com in the bookstore, Fire Breathing Kittens, that part's all one word, podcast. The authors do a great job of adapting the stories into fun novels. We also have official merchandise on Redbubble.com. Imagine owning a notepad with the Fire Breathing Kitten logo on the front, or a t-shirt with one of your favorite characters. And lastly, I'd like to take a moment to sincerely thank all of you. We don't pay to advertise this show, so the only way we can grow is through the support of listeners like you. Thank you. Greetings, lords, ladies, and gentlemen, and welcome back to the second half of the Fire Breathing Kittens podcast. I'm your compere for this evening, welcoming you to... Uh, Lord and Lady Farthing's Manor on the Hill. Um, before we get too far into festivities, I should probably reintroduce you to the people you have met during the first half of this here adventure. Now, coming up is uh, someone who we've all known for a very long time, but uh, seems to have undergone a bit of a transformation in the latter half. So uh, let me introduce you to uh, Lady Featherby, uh, previously known as Nesgrax. Well, hello. I'm Lady Featherby. I'm a glamorous woman. And not a dragonborn at all, right? No. <laughs> not a dragon. Not, no. not even a little bit. A human. A beautiful, <clears throat> elegant woman with a long hey, not a, neck. Uh, Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> like a swan. <laughs> like a swan. Out of interest, how, uh, what's the time limit on seeming? Uh, yeah, good question. Look that up for us. That'll be funny later. That could that could be a little bit of a Cinderella moment there. She may need to visit the powder room. Yeah. Re reverse Cinderella. Once an hour. Uh, oh, eight, eight hours. Eight oh, hours. Okay. Nice. I think you might be all right. Mm -hmm. And Lady Farthing, but... you are much more elegant than Olive. You look oh. wonderful. <laughs> please, please. I know. Speaking of Olive, <laughs> that's the next person we're introducing who is now taking the role of uh, the Featherbees, um, unnamed so far, servant. Say hello. That's right. You don't need to name your servants. They just say yes, sir, and yes, ma'am, and they do what you say. Exactly. They're the help. They don't need names. Yeah. If anybody asks their name, that's how you know they're an outsider and they don't belong, and then you start to shame them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm. Actually, that would have been one of the <laughs> one of the things that would get you a clock if you tried to name your butler. <laughs> anyway, last but most certainly not least, at least in um, size, is the the man the man himself, Lord Featherby. Uh, once in uh, certain areas of the land, known as Doctor Crod the Third. All right, Nezzy, you ready for my rich person accent? Go for it, honey. <laughs> Hello, I am rich and you are not. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so wealthy. As you can hear, folks, we are in for a good second half of so strapping. Um, um, put your tables in the upright position and let's get going on this episode. So uh, just to uh, give everyone just a quick recap of the last uh, half of the uh, show. Um, so we started out um, in Nicomoy on the docks when uh, Nesgrax got a quick call from his old friend Mendax, who has been working um, with the Department of Nomadland Security to uh, fight um, 
slash fend off the HHO, um, usually doing not wet, not amazingly. Let's just put it that way. Um, we had a little bit of exposition talking about the beginnings of the HHO and um, trying to figure out who was actually in charge instead of Bee Lady. However, our team, our glorious adventurers, um, were sent to um, the village of New Brain Towns somewhere far to the north of Nicomoy uh, to try and hunt down the last member of the Changeling gang, Yul Sevchenko, in order to track him down and figure out who's really behind it all. So with some uh, jiggery pokery, some snorkel horses and some uh, questionable accents, uh, we found our way to um, Farthing Manor on the Hill, um, a very swanky house um, built on top of a hill, um, as the name suggests. Um, and they have now taken the person personalities. No, they've taken the identities because identity theft is fine if it's from a rich person. Um, they've taken yes. the identities of uh, Lord and Lady Featherby and their unnamed uh, <laughs> servant, their name here. So that is where we stand. We are uh, standing just in, uh, just outside the front doors, as um, light streams out, um, illuminating the um, the driveway. Um, and standing um, in the doorway, welcome. Wait, standing in the doorway, ready to welcome you, uh, sits um, a very cute-looking golden retriever with a bow tie and a a note in its. Uh, mouth. The unnamed servant is obviously meant to do this task. She takes the note from the doggy? Oh, thank you for not eating it. <laughs> uh, oh, that's right. I eat dogs now. I keep forgetting. <laughs> uh, yes, it looks delicious. <laughs> uh, the note says, uh, my, name is, my name is Hemingway. I am your butler for this evening. Um, you may call on me for anything you wish. Also, belly rubs are appreciated. Oh my. I love its belly, knowing that Lady and Lord Featherby would not deign to do this. Mm -mm. I don't touch the help. <laughs> so I'll give um, it belly pats. Yeah. Uh, Hemingway is uh, very appreciative and licks your hand. Aw, uh, does he smell that I have like five pounds of dog meat on me? Do you really? Yeah. Give me a second. Uh, no. <laughs> He doesn't. Oh, you mean, wait, do you, you don't mean like dog food. Do you mean like dog meat, flesh. meat from a dog? Oh, yeah. God. Okay, I bring some out and I, I give a little treat to Hemingway. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, he, he sn sniffs it and uh, um, politely declines. <laughs> no cannibalism here. <laughs> All right, I eat it. That would have been a good side quest. He becomes obsessed with eating other dogs. And he becomes like <laughs> Count Dogula. Moving on. Swiftly, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> okay, so Hemingway leads you into um, the main entrance hall of um, Farthing Manor. Um, if he were a, a humanoid, he could probably explain to you um, how... Oh, um, I speak dog... So, you do. You've and got you, your um, <laughs> roof. Got your and you eat roof, them. Roof, 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 roof. roof, roof. Oh, this gets more and more terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> you, I'm gonna eat you. Come you here didn't, so I can eat you. You didn't. You didn't want to eat cats because there are like cat people. But <laughs> no, no, no. I was told to stop eating cats. Oh, There's okay. a difference. <laughs> but then you. But now you switch to dogs. But you can. Communicate with dogs <laughs> and cats. Yeah, I was I was told that I should stop eating cats if I wanted to stop scaring beans and start eating dogs because they don't have any souls. So I do, and then I got ton of sun of moon, and now I can talk to everyone and everything that has a language and, and eat them. dogs. Hey, I'm an obligate carnivore. I didn't make my path in life; it chose me. So, um, I mean, you all know that cows are kind of nice, right? Yeah. <laughs> Especially when they're on yeah. the plate. <laughs> All right. So really, like, real life vegetarian, y'all can't judge me. I'm just <laughs> being you at yourself. <laughs> Take it. So <laughs> I talk to the dog. I'm like, Roof, hi. Oh. 
Hello. You, 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 you speak dog? I do. Is there anything you'd like me to communicate with the others for you? Oh, well, I mean, I, I am just help, but uh, there is very good food in other room, and um, there are many fancy people uh, to talk to, and um, I think there is going to be some speech uh, before everything gets started. Thank you for belly rub. You're welcome, Hemingway. I share this information with everybody. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Hemingway. Roof, roof. Oh, no. Translating for Hemingway. Oh, no, Nezgrax, you just named a help. I, I named... Wait, what did I do? I named <laughs> you, the you help. Refer, you, you refer to the help by name. Oh, I see. Well, you already had a name. You do not use their name. How uh, dare you? Why did I ever marry you? Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I'm appalled with myself. Thank you, dog. <laughs> okay, um, so making your way into like the main area, there are long tables lined with uh, food. So you, uh, some like the, the silverware you saw earlier is uh, laid on top of there, um, which is like covered in food. So there is um, like, hang on. I hope they wash that. Uh, six six different birds stuffed into each other. There's like the centerpiece. So there's like a, you know, a, a chaffinch stuffed into a pigeon, stuffed into a raven, stuffed into a <laughs> chicken, stuffed into a goose, stuffed into a turkey. Is that six? I think that's six. If it's not, add a swan. Yeah, well, add in like an albatross or something. Wait, what does the swan store in town do if not... Food swans? Oh, no, it's for your personal swans. Like, your pet swans. Okay. So they've like got, like, leashes. goggles or extra flippers or, like, yeah, like, uh, Collars. feather brushes. Yeah. <laughs> Why would you eat swans? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Olive eats anything. Yeah, that's true. Nope, just true. dogs. I've been told. <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure you were told to only eat dogs. But, hey, miscommunication. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, you wonder, um, you're in this uh, room with like the tables laid out with all sorts of um, like extravagant and decadent food. Um, one of the tables is entirely uh, set for desserts. So there's a mountain of profiteroles, chocolate fountains, um, all sorts of uh, tarts and like um, delicate cakes and um, tiny, tiny little pastries uh, with like jam and cream and stuff in. It's all very tasty. And everyone um, who's already arrived at the party um, is stood around a large uh, staircase, which is weird in a dining hall, but hey, let's go with it. Um, and there is a, a string quartet playing in the corner. Um, some like fancy, fancy music. Um, uh, walking down from the top of the staircase um, uh, is... Just a let's say let's say he's a human uh, man um, decked out in like a very uh, fancy tuxedo. You think maybe from this distance, maybe it's dragon skin. It's undoubtedly very expensive. Um, he stands himself at the top of the stairs and looks out at everyone uh, with a glass of champagne. And um, in the crowd, you see. Um, everyone's butlers because everyone brings their own butlers to these sorts of things um everyone's butlers are handing out um glasses of champagne to everyone and uh one of them just uh wanders over to you three well not you all of you're you're part of the help <laughs> um offers um the lord and lady featherby a uh, glass of champagne each dr crud will take it and not acknowledge the help excellent uh yeah i also take it and I say, oh, thank you, darling. Dr. Crud elbows him in the, in the uh, side. <laughs> we do not acknowledge the help. Sir, sir. You're at this close to a divorce. Oh, my. Apologies, honey. I don't know what is going on with me today. Thank you, the universe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so at, back at the top of the stairs, um, man's um, 
raised his glass and uh, like starts speaking to the room. He says, "Welcome everybody to such a fine occasion. Um, thanks first, thank you first of all to um, Lord and Lady Farthing, whose glorious manner this is. It's um, it's it's just such a shame they were not able to make it. They are of course traveling on the continent, um, hunting." I by no doubt, um, but they have graciously allowed us um, usage of their their home for the festivities. So, um, well, there's not not too much else to say really. As um, eat, drink, be merry, mingle. Um, needless to say, the basement is off limits uh, due to uh, safety concerns. Um, and then some someone like at the back uh, yells out. You mean the wine safety? Hmm. And everyone laughs. Goes, <laughs> quite, quite. Yes. Um, so naturally, have have a good time, and I will see you, all of you at the um, well on the dance floor. I I suppose. I I do a little golf clap. That's okay. Everyone else is as well. Okay. Everyone. Everyone. You, actually, you, right you, start, you, you start off the golf clap. So you I look at everyone clap. expectantly, like, clap, clap, yes. <laughs> Today is just going to be a complete embarrassment, isn't it, lovey? Oh, darling. Uh, uh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys are a really healthy couple. Uh <laughs> I don't know, it's pretty par for the course for this room. <laughs> Oof. Oof. All right. Um, I'm with Hemingway, of course, right? Fetching something? Yeah, yeah. What, what do you fancy going to fetch? Do you, like, off to the kitchens, like, uh, changing glasses, or...? I'm definitely distracting Hemingway by throwing a stick. I meant literal fetching. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, you guys have like the chance to uh, mingle or do some investigations. Remember, your uh, the idea is to try and find this mysterious changeling who could be anyone here. Hmm. So anyway, oh. they're all changelings, right? Roof, roof, roof. Like they <laughs> fled Nick and Moy, they all went here. Yeah, roof. What's a changeling? Good boy. I pet him. All right. <laughs> no, no, no. What? What? It, what is? What? They change shape. It's okay, dog. You're a dog. I don't. It's fine. It's fine. I pet you. I throw the stick. Hey. Oh, runs after it. <laughs> hmm. So okay. that guy was definitely who we're looking for, right? It's. <laughs> it seems to me that he would be a perfect candidate. He's in a position of power. He's decadent. So how do we check him for changelingness? Um. Good question. Uh, we could uh, corner him and punch him in the face. <laughs> okay, I like this so far. The only way I know to check for a changeling is to look at his guts. Is that what you want me to do? Oh, um, that seems a bit harsh, <laughs> considering we don't know... He's the changeling. He may just be a person. And will end up performing an unnecessary surgery. No such thing. <laughs> I was going to say unnecessary surgery is Crud's middle name. No <laughs> <laughs> uh, <Not> oh. practices. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, um, maybe I can... Go talk to him and Dr. Charm Crud jabs you. Your accent, lovey. Your accent. Yeah. <clears throat> Hello. There we go. <laughs> oh, There's okay. the woman I fell in yes. love with. Perhaps I could uh, talk with him and try to tease out some details of what race he is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just don't cheat on me again. Oh my gosh. You fit in perfectly. <laughs> 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 
so much depth. <laughs> okay, I go to have a convincing backstory. <laughs> I go up to the our our host. Um, did he name himself? I'm not sure if I caught a, a name. Uh, not in that, no. Okay, so if if he's within sight, I want to walk right up to him. Yeah, of course. He's um, wandered down to like the crowd in general and started like uh, mingling with everyone, uh, everyone mm-hmm. else, and gone to like fetch some canapes or something. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, uh, you you uh, walk over to him like uh, the, like the at the canapé table. He's like um, stocking up on like shrimp or something. Mm-hmm. I um, like throw my my hands up, you know, boisterously, and I say, "Darling." It is I, Lady Featherby. Uh, he uh, returns your looking goes, Ah, oh, wonderful. Hang on, no, he's not French. Ah, <laughs> oh, wonderful to see you. Of course. Once again, it's been so long. When was the last time we saw each other? What is it at um, uh, Baron Somerset's, uh, was it that, that croquet party some years ago, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, please. I was much too drunk to remember that. <laughs> I think we all were, my darling. Far please. too. Far. Uh, please, Far too. if we could have a moment in private, I have things that I would very much like to discuss with you. Is that right? You have another business venture for me. Yes, it could be quite lucrative. Is that right? Well, colour me intrigued. Let me just um and he um uh puts his empty champagne glass just on, on a passing waiter's tray. Goes, ah, by all means lead the way. Fantastic. And I sort of sultrily walk towards a an unoccupied room. Oh, it's not sort of sultry. It's very sultry. Very sultry. <laughs> Sult- yep. sult- sultrily. Sultrily? Sultrily. <laughs> um, however, next week, I will just have to uh, make you do a quick, let's say, just a plain uh, charisma roll for uh, sultriness. Okie dokie. 17. 17. That's, uh, that's definitely a sultry sort of number, so don't worry about it. Basically, if you had if you'd rolled low, you would have just like fallen, <laughs> just, <laughs> tripped over so, your heels, so just smack. landed in like a, a, a bowl of mashed potato or something. <laughs> I kind of wish I failed now. But hey, there's always time. Yeah. <sighs> so, uh, where would you like to lead him? Um, if there's like a quiet room nearby where I can bring him in and then like close the doors so that it's just the two of us. Yeah, sure. Uh, let's say there's like a, a like a smoking parlor or something just <laughs> okay. off the. I just want to point out, everybody heard. Don't cheat on me again. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, cr- crud. I know you're in character, but you have just seen your <laughs> your wife le- like immediately lead this dude off. <laughs> in response. <laughs> <laughs> well. So we'll, we'll, we'll so. Prep that up. <laughs> have have a think about how you'd want to respond, and we'll come back to you in a moment, Lady Featherby. Um, mm. You lead him off to like a um, like a smoking parlor, which doesn't have anyone in at the moment. So there are some lush armchairs um, next to a fireplace, which is um, roaring um, happily. Mm-hmm. How does how does this go? Um, I sort of take him by the hand. And lead him up towards the fireplace. And I say, oh, darling, it has been far too long. I feel like we need to get reacquainted. And I put my my hand like on his, like I stroke it down his cheek. And <laughs> when I do that, I do shocking grasp. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to roll to hit. Yeah, that's a spell attack. Uh, yep. So that's a 24 to hit. Certainly. And uh, that'll do nine damage. Okay. So you uh, you like uh, stroke 
his um like his face and just how strong is this like spark that leaps from your fingertips to him um it's like a really bad static electricity charge as if like it's just really dry in the room but it really yeah. hurts him <laughs> so <laughs> Okay, so there's like a crack of, yeah. and there's like a spark, uh, like a, let's say, blue spark that flies between you and him, and he like recoils mm -hmm. a bit, like clutching his cheek. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, well, I haven't felt something like that in quite some time. Is this what you were wanting to talk about, this business proposition? I, um, I, I want to do like a, investigation or like a perception check to see like if his features have changed as a as a in reaction to my shocking him okay uh yeah just uh hit me with a perception check okay or, or, or you could do an insight if you would prefer uh i just rolled perception and it's 21 so i'll stick with that okay so um he obviously like recoils uh throws his hand up to his um uh, cheek um, but you don't see any change in like eyes um, I mean obviously he looks quite shocked hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you don't see any like physical physiological changes in like so isn't like nose stays exactly the same the ears don't like sprout the hair is the same color as it, as it was uh -huh. um, but um, actually, uh, throw me yeah actually uh, now make me an insight check okay why am I so bad at insight? Twelve. Well, that's 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 okay. Um, I will just um, use this to. So, you just have a moment and think. Wait, if he knows Lady Featherby, and they've seen each other years prior to this, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then it may be unlikely that um, this is like an identity he's stolen because. I don't think the changelings can like steal memories mm -hmm. um, in the same way. Isn't it kind of weird? He doesn't notice one turned into a giant elephant, and the other turned into a <laughs> Christine. What's her name? Hey, hey, you, Christi hey you... Christina Bransky. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's been a while. They were really drunk. Okay, so are we? Are we for canon's sake? Are we saying that Lady Featherby actually does look like Christina Bransky? Yeah. Yeah, I okay. guess so. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Okay, perfect. That, that was help fortunate. <laughs> okay. So um, I just give him like the lightest little flirty slap on the cheek. And I say, um, on second thought, darling, my marriage is very important to me. Goodbye. <laughs> and I leave. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you hear chuckling from behind you as you, as you walk off like, <laughs> oh, that was a good one. <laughs> I'm really glad she teased me and shocked me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no, the, the the my marriage is very important to me. Oh, uh, it's a good joke. Good uh, joke. Uh, this is uh, some dark stuff. Yeah, I'm glad I'm with the dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to go back up to my companions and I'm going to say quietly enough so that um, Hemingway doesn't hear us i don't know if hemingway can understand i guess he must understand common because otherwise he wouldn't be able to respond to our commands but i do say to each of my companions um it's it's not the host he's not a, a change thing i just tested it and he's, he's he's not how did you test it was it fun for him i i shocked his face <laughs> To each their own. <laughs> Don't worry, darling. I, I'm all yours. Oh, goody. Can crocodiles vomit? <laughs> 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 um, how about we take a um, we do a quick flashback um, to see what Crud was doing during like those couple of minutes. So, like, uh, like what what sort of thing? Like, you've seen your fake wife uh, just leading this dude up um, to, uh, like, this door, going through, shutting it behind them. So what are you doing during this time? Well, I think he's going to see that 
know what's going to actually happen, but what he's already said out loud. So he's going to go to the ner- nearest uh, rich person and he's going to say, well, can you believe she's gone and done that? I, I told her not to do that. Okay, so I, I've written down a load of like, like posh people names. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So you like sidle up to um, a lady with like very tall, like hairstyle, kind of like Marge Simpson, but a bit like half the height. Um, it's got like kind of ribbons in her hair as well that like would go round the round the edge. He's like, oh, darling, you mustn't blame them. You know, they must have their. We must have our fun every so often. Is, you know, we can't exactly, you know, do these sorts of things all the time now, can we? Who do you have fun with? Can it be me? Blech. They can. <laughs> they can vomit. They often vomit because they can't digest food if it's too cold. Well, how about you, um... Uh, looks you up and down and go, hmm, could be interesting. Really what? How I... about we f- find me a bit later? All right, then. I shall do that. This nose is very talented. I'm sure it is. Um, Charmed to meet you. Um, And it's like, what's your name? Lord Featherby. Lord Featherby. Uh, uh, Charmed. Uh, my name is uh, the Lady Tessington, but not that Lady Tessington. What Lady Tessington? <gasps> you don't know? No. We are from the other side of the island. Oh, of course. You're one of the the Easterlings, are you? Oh, tell yes. me, is there, um, how's the, how's the, um, how's the weather over that side? Isn't, isn't the weather atrocious? Every day of the week. Hmm. But, yeah, okay. <laughs> so that's, uh, let's see, two flirted with. Okay. <laughs> So Hemingway, I say, oh? Riff Riff, who's the newest in the house? Oh. The newest smelling person. Everyone. Oh, yep. Okay. <sighs> she eats something. <laughs> <laughs> Throw a stick again? Yep. <laughs> oh. you, you, can, you, you can, like, go and explore more a bit, Olive, if you, if you feel a bit left out. Um, you do oh. have like other servants if you want to chat to them, or you know. nah, it's it's fine. Servants can get away with a lot of like poking around. I th- <laughs> the help I notice like I everything. This... Yeah, I feel like this is going a certain way, and I'm just. I would like to stay within eyesight. Uh, no, I don't want to watch whatever Lord Featherby's going to do. <laughs> See, like I want to protect my friends, but I don't want to watch them do that so like i oh gosh I, i'm gonna go find a comfy bed and take a nap okay <laughs> <laughs> where would you like to take your nap the comfiest um, bed in the house definitely the master suite okay uh, uh you you'll um start uh, just walking around trying to get the lay of like the layout of the house um you find um another grand set of steps not the same set that was um, in the dining room um, that leads up. It seems to like the, the western wing of the house uh, where all the uh, the bedrooms seem to be. You find your way to like the grandest set of doors you can find. And you're like, I'm pretty confident this is the master bedroom, um, which um, does have inscribed on it um, like Lord and Lady Farthing. Um, you open the door uh, and like sneak in and... Yeah, there's like this giant four poster bed. It's very luxurious. Um, however, give me a perception check while you're in there. Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. Um, as you close the door, you get a whiff of something up your up your snoot. Um, the fire is like roaring merrily in the hearth again. Um, but you think there's something a bit off about um, this little area. And it seems as though, yeah, it seems like maybe someone else was in here before me. And uh, you look down on the floor and sure enough, there are um, some very, very faint footprints um, in that area. 
So maybe someone else has been sneaking around. I would hope so. It's a house during a party. I mean, if your medicine cabinet, if you think your medicine cabinet isn't going to get checked when you host a party, <laughs> you are incorrect. So I pull back the covers. Get in. Have a, have a, have a sneak. I do. I'm checked out. Okay, I will say it is like one of the, the comfiest beds you have ever slept in. Nice. Maybe I'm checked in to Hotel Farthing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, cutting back downstairs. Uh, okay, so Lady Featherby um, mm -hmm. walks back outside um, to meet up with um, Rudd and Olive. Let's, I'm just going to say normal names because sometimes I have to <laughs> check down on my notes to find out which names are made up. <laughs> Uh, walks back out to meet up with Crud and Olive. Uh, sees Olive uh, walk, like um, hang around with um, Hemingway, and then making her way off. Um, so you make your way over to uh, Crud to uh, compare notes, mm -hmm. which is where we came up to last time, where mm -hmm. you were like, well, "It's not him," and you're like, "How how did you check?" Yeah, that that that. Okay. Um, I want to say to Crud. Um, Darling, where's servant? Our servant has wandered off. Hmm. Perhaps she is investigating this mysterious basement that we're apparently not supposed to inspect. <laughs> she probably should be. <laughs> <She's not. laughs> oh, that's a good idea. Should we look for the bathroom and join her? Good idea. Just don't get any sexy ideas. <laughs> well, apparently we only go for strangers now, so don't worry about that. It's awful marriage. It's just awful. It, it's not real. It's okay. I know. I'm just... Uh... I know. It's very convincing. But... It's not real in two ways. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I guess uh, we're going to try to sneak off towards the basement. Okay. Um, well, let's say you're uh, um, you're like in the midst of a lot of like uh, fancy people who are like harumphing and going hur, 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 harumph, around harumph, you, harumph. Um, and you'll you'll need to like quite loudly make an excuse to. Um, you know, to escape because everyone needs something to go do. I must go powder my nose, or I must go and check the the pennies in the ashtray. That sort of thing, you know. I have diarrhea. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, um, okay. He's, from, from he's going to need a lot of help. I'll, yeah. I'll come with you, darling. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as as you uh, as you walk off, you hear someone go. Oh, poor fellow, I had that far too much fruit. And he's like, and then someone else goes, Oh, yes, didn't, um, did, didn't your grandfather, um, poo himself to death? He goes, That's personal. <laughs> wow. That okay, sucks. so, mm, uh, wandering off to find the basement. Okay. Um, so the basement is located through the kitchen because it's more of a cellar. Sort of area, so you will have to um, more or less sneak your way past uh, like the kitchen staff and the butlers. Well, it's more more the butlers. It's just the uh, just the butlers uh, that people have brought along with them have been like uh, like assigned to work in um, different areas. So some of like serving drinks, some are like m uh, doing the valet and meeting people. Some are working in the kitchens. It's weird. Some are socialist asleep in a bed for. <laughs> It's a weirdly socialist situation for rich people. <laughs> um, so I want to like tug on Crud's like jacket and say like, "Darling, why don't you come over here where no one can see us?" And I want to like take him, lead him into like a shadowy corner where 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 no one can see us before we go into the kitchen. Okay. Yeah. Oh yes, lead away, darling. Yeah. So there are shadowy alcoves aplenty to pick from. Okay, and then I'm going to cast Invisibility on us both. Um, so yeah, that will be at the third level. I get one extra target. So we are now both invisible. 
Okay. Uh, quick, quick question, Nesgrax. Mm -hmm. um, seeming, is that a concentration spell? Uh, let's see. That would really suck if it was. <laughs> well, you see. just have to cast it again once we uh, become invisible. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What is this? This is... No, it's not. Okay. High five. High five, everybody. <laughs> High five, <laughs> you at home. Aren't you happy <laughs> that I didn't mess that one up? Me too. Okay, that that is really handy, actually. Yeah. So you uh, you make uh, each other and you make both of you invisible uh, so you mm -hmm. can wander through the kitchens fairly unabated. Uh, just make m both of you, just make me uh, deck saving throws, dexterity saving throws, just to make sure you don't like knock over any like hands or glasses or make, mm -hmm. a, make a complete mess of walking through the kitchen. I, I got a four. Okay. I got a nine. Okay, those are both excellent <laughs> examples of making a mess of walking through a kitchen. <laughs> You're invisible, so it just you're looks invisible. like a poltergeist oh, is having yeah. a tantrum. Yeah. You, yeah, you're invisible. You can't see your feet. Crud, you're five feet wide. You're trying to sneak through, like, a fairly overstuffed kitchen. And, like, there are, like, these, uh, like, um, buses of, like, um, like, plates which are stacked high, which need washing. And you try and, like, sneak through. You kind of, like, swerve around um, one of the butlers as they walk past you. And you kind of just... Briefly knock over one plate, which knocks over another plate, which knocks over another plate. And there's just this whole like domino effect, which <laughs> works its way around the kitchen and starts smashing stuff. Um, and like all the butlers are like starting to panic and run around and go, oh, oh, what's going on? What's going on? There must be a ghost. This place must be haunted. <laughs> However, it's a good opportunity to, to like just scarper through <laughs> because it's already in such a mess. That was the plan all along. <laughs> um, oh. But you um, get through the kitchen door, um, like just at the, at the far end, which leads down to the basement. Um, uh, there is a, like a set of steps leading down into the cellar, and you can feel as you go down because the, you know, the light starts uh, dimming, and you can like the temperature starts to drop a bit. You can feel it like just getting colder and a bit mustier. Um, so the brickwork is nowhere near as um, like pristine as it was on the outside. It's fairly um, muted in color. Um, you can smell some sort of uh, weird, like damp kind of smell, but you're not quite sure where it's coming from. But down at the bottom of the stairs, there is just um, a door leading into the cellar, um, which has like um, like a, a grating just on the front. It's about five inches, um, like square. Uh, across in a square, so five inches across, five inches down. Um, just as like a kind of a grating. It seems like there might be some sort of sliding mechanism on the other side for some reason. Uh, Try but, there the is door. Also a, but there is also a sign just attached to the door saying, um, like, no admittance. Um, yeah, just like no admittance, like cellar. Okay. Try the door, see if it's locked or not. Uh, uh, it is very much, very much locked. I knock. Uh, you knock, and like the grate at the back opens up, oh. uh, and you just see a pair of eyes like looking at you, and he goes, "Show me your thing." Aren't they invisible? Oh, should I make us? <laughs> should I make us visible now? <laughs> Doctor Crud punches him with his <laughs> truck like, through on. the hole. Oh yeah, I, honestly, I forgot you're invisible, so I, I'll I'll redo that. <laughs> so uh, so so you knock, the thing opens, you see a pair of eyes like staring out, and it's like, what? And that's where the trunk goes and hits him in the face. I mean, there is like the grating across, so it's like a steel like mesh. Oh, okay. Um, so like a like a if you imagine like a pie lattice, right? Just that like a metal yeah, across. like a confessional. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Um, okay. So, let's see. Um, I do have, would a syringe fit through the grating? Yes. So, I toss a <laughs> syringe in there. <laughs> right in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, this is a blind potion inside of it. Okay, I mean, you're already invisible, but 
Go for it. Uh, roll to hit, then, I think. Yeah, I, I just want him to cool. be blinded so that maybe he just leaves it open so we can jimmy off the, the grate and reach through there and unlock it. Maybe mm. he'll panic and run away. To hit, um, that's going to be 25 or 24. Okay, that will that will most certainly like cork him right between the eyes. Um, however, Nesgrax, just uh, remind me on the wording of invisibility. Now, if I if I remember correctly, if you like attack or take an action, then invisibility stops. Correct. Uh, let's see. The spell and yeah, the spell ends for a target that attacks or casts a spell. That's right. Okay. Well, it's a good thing he's blind now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> So how how long does the blindness last? <laughs> um, uh, these duh, 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 duh. oh they have to make a constitution. He has to make a constitution saving throw. Okay, what sort of number are we looking at? The one that's written down on my piece of paper. Okay. Uh, well, I rolled I rolled the nineteen. Oh, that passes. So he can see um, me. Okay. Um, so you, he, I mean, he still gets stuck in the face with a needle. That's not not gonna hurt. <laughs> so maybe uh, Doctor Crud will immediately duck, not knowing whether it's gonna work or not. So he's just gonna do that out of caution. Okay. Um, just roll me a quick uh, stealth check with disadvantage. Oh, okay. Because well, it, it's, it's it's like in Skyrim when you shoot someone with an arrow, they come running over, <laughs> <laughs> and like you wait and hide, and they wander back with an arrow like in their shoulder and go, okay. "Must have been nothing." Uh, that's <laughs> going to be five. <laughs> okay. Well, the good news is you're rubbish at hiding in a very small alleyway. <laughs> <laughs> um. So he gets like conked in the in the face with this needle, and he goes, "Ah!" And it pulls it out. He goes. Wait, who are you? I, I'm sorry, I got diarrhea. I'm looking for the... I'm sorry, I have diarrhea. I'm looking <laughs> for the potty. So what happened to your voice? Nah, I'm just kidding. He doesn't do that. <laughs> that, that. That was the diarrhea talking at first. Uh, yeah, bathrooms are up on the main floor, um, like out the kitchen, left and another left. There's a sign. But Thank you. I, I mean, you're not here for the, the thing, are you? All right, you got me. Yes, I'm here for the thing. There is no diarrhea. Okay, if that's the case, then show me. Show me. I'm not going to go with my first instinct because that would not be good. Um, no, it wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just waiting on my butler to bring it to me. What can we do while we wait? <laughs> uh, oh, gosh, I wish I had telepathy. I'm gonna. Can I do something? Yes, Greg. If you if you <laughs> drop your invisibility and then show him the seeming and then drop seeming, mm -hmm. I think he'll let you in. If I show him the seeming and drop yeah. the seeming, then yeah. he'll let me in. I think so. Why? Oh. Okay. <laughs> I, I want I want to continue this conversation. <laughs> I but, I'm sorry. I'm asleep. I can't help at all. But this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to whisper to Olive Jr. to go find Olive um, and <laughs> tell her where we are. Um, so uh, I want Olive Jr. to go to go find Olive and wake her up. <laughs> and then Hemingway uh, eats her. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I mean, I hadn't considered that an option, but I can now. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> Sorry, Alec Jr. E <laughs> so, I, I will. I'll. I'll get an idea from from somewhere else, and I'll. I'll. I'll drop my invisibility. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. And I'll say. Uh, I'll say, hey. Uh, so I, I'm still Christine Baranski. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm yeah. not invisible. So I say. Hello, I'm here for the thing. Okay, ma'am, if um, that's the case, then uh, show me. Sure. And I drop my seeming, and now I'm just Nesgrex. Ah. Hello. I'm sure you're aware, sir, that uh, magic in this area is um, strictly prohibited. Magic? How dare you? I'm a changeling. Uh, I mean, roll me a deception check. Okay. 
five. <laughs> We're just going to have to break this door down. <laughs> the, the pair of eyes kind of like uh, chuckles and goes, <laughs> uh, for, sure you are, sure you are. But seriously, magic is um, not funny around these parts. I'm afraid I'm going to have to call security to escort you out. Um, I'm going to cast Phantasmal Killer. <laughs> oh <my gosh. laughs> what? So Phantasmal Killer is, I tap into the nightmares of a creature I can see within range <laughs> and create an illusory <laughs> manifestation of its deepest fears, visible only to that creature. The target must make a wisdom saving throw. On a failed save, the target becomes frightened for the duration. At the end of the turns, before the spell ends, the target must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or take 4d10 psychic damage. Uh, on a successful save, the spell ends. Okay. And being stuck in the basement, they might want to open the door to get out. That's true. Of being with their deepest fear. Yep. So uh, wisdom saving throw, uh, 16 is the save. There's this old phrase, and it's like the sun and the wind were having a discussion about how best to take a person's coat off. And the mm -hmm. wind said, I can do it, and blew harder and harder, but the person just clutched the coat on them more and more tightly. And the sun was like, I can do it, and beat down upon that person until they willingly took their coat off. How do you get someone to open the door? <laughs> Make them see their worst fear in the room with them. <laughs> yeah, you scare the crap out of them. Good strategy. I am very wise. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if I failed, uh, mm -hmm. what damage was it again? Uh, it's 4d10 psychic damage. Or just kill them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, they start like screaming behind the door. Um, uh huh. And like, oh, 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 no, no, wasn't me, please, no. And uh, they collapse very dead. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, having been eaten inside out by their own nightmares. <laughs> okay. Well, if I can get well. into that room quickly, we can save him. I sort of like dust off my hands, like, took care of that one. <laughs> my work is done here. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So. <laughs> Now we only have one obstacle, this huge door. <laughs> well, if we can get this grate off, I could just reach in and unlock it with my trunk. So let's uh, let's start working on this grate. Okie dokie. Um, I will... Uh, what's going to be the best thing to get rid of a grate on a door? Maybe... Maybe... A magic missile? Oh yeah, explosions. That's exactly what we need right now. <laughs> well, we are, we're far away. We're, if, if no one heard this guy <laughs> screaming to death, <laughs> they're, they're probably and not going to hear my magic missile. Actually, that, that that's an excellent point. Hang on. <laughs> uh, just want to remind everybody of uh, of what we've done tonight so far. We've <laughs> stolen a carriage from a nice couple. I mean, you made don't their know they marriage were nice. seem made their marriage seem awful in public. <laughs> um, killed a dude, and this is this is what we've done. We're the heroes. He, he still got three death saving throws. We might get in there before he, before he fails at the third one. There's something I mean, very speaking, shady going death, on. Death saving throws are only for people with levels. <laughs> <laughs> There's something very. I don't. I don't think this guy was a good guy. No, nobody who's a good guy hides behind a door that says no admittance in a secret basement in a castle. I will, I will say, though, that the screaming has attracted attention. Okay. Um, and uh, from behind you, the door, like, opens, and you just see a lot of butlers, like, peeking through. Like in Scooby-Doo, you know, they've got the heads stacked one on another. <laughs> They're all just, like, staring down at you two. This guy had a heart attack in here. He needs help. Some I say, someone open the door. He's he, he needs a doctor. That's me. And this is the doctor, Lord Farthington. <laughs> yeah, or Featherby. Lord Lord Featherby, the doctor. Doctor Lord Featherby, thank you. 
Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, yep, that's right. DM, this has gone all the heck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now they have to kill 30 butlers. <laughs> okay, uh, just brief it. Like, um, one, of, one of you give me a deception rule. Um, okay. <laughs> or both. We'll just take the highest one. Okay. Eight. That's going to be an 18. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, one of them, like, maybe a middle head, uh, looks over at you. How did you get in there? <gasps> Sorry, I just had an idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, go for it. Uh, I'm I'm going to... Oh, hold on. I need to make sure that I can <laughs> do this. Fireball. This quickly. <laughs> Uh, oh, one second, one second. He's just um, gonna kill everybody tonight. No, 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 no. Um, uh, if you want, we can cut oh, up. You can uh, reanimate to, dead. To, exactly. Uh, we can cut yes. up to see what Olive's doing. <laughs> so that, I think that's that's what I want to do. I, I want uh, whatever the consequences are. I'm going to <laughs> to do create undead <laughs> on the guy that okay. we just killed. Yay, okay. Yay, create undead. Oh, so, finally. Uh, okay, so. He, so here are the rules. <laughs> what, what's this we you say? <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna say uh, you can't cast this. I can only cast a spell at night. Is it night? Check. Uh, yes. Okay. I can choose up to three corpses, but there's only one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> only it become, one. It becomes a ghoul under my control, uh, and I can mentally command any any creature that I animated. Uh, that's within 120 feet of me. Um, uh, I decide what the action the creature will take, and it will move during its next turn. Or I can issue a general command, such as guard to a guard something. Uh, uh, Open door is that one? Yeah. When, once given an order, the creature continues to follow it until the task is complete. The creature is under my control for 24 hours. Stops obeying any command. To maintain maintain control da, 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 24 hours okay um yeah i'm just wondering if they can talk <laughs> like if i if i can make them say like it's okay <laughs> i'm fine <laughs> okay so that so that it doesn't matter so i'm gonna so i reanimate him do, do i have enough time to do it i do it takes one minute okay so one minute <laughs> goes by uh, okay and... what well, one minute is a long time so you start yeah. like casting the spell um However, these these guys recognize what magic looks like, and they're like, "Oh, that's not good." So um, he's having a oh, medical no. fit. It's okay. Just like the guy over there had a heart attack, he's also having a seizure. You know, I doubt the butlers arrived in six seconds. Hmm. Well, I mean, they they killed him. He started screaming, falls to the floor. Yeah, and they ran, they like looked at one another. Have you ever seen uh, <laughs> what could go wrong? It's a subreddit of people reacting to. <laughs> um, yeah. So there was one of a grease fire the other day, and it took them like a good twenty seconds of staring at the grease fire before they decided <laughs> to pour water on it. <laughs> oh yeah, I saw that one. Yeah. So like twenty, yeah. Oh, so, so, they, like so they stare at each other for twenty seconds before. Doing and then they else. head down the stairs to the basement. Which takes him another ten seconds. So can he be like thirty seconds in to the minute? Well, no, I'm I'm, I'm saying like the, um, maybe Nesgrax and Crud would stare at each other at the corpse they've created for twenty <laughs> seconds before <laughs> thinking about. There's no else. they. There's no they. This is all Nesgrax. This this is all fine. This is all fine. <laughs> let's just let's just go with it. I, I'm I'm happy to yeah. uh, try to run out the clock on these guys and get my. My guy to come back alive. He can reanimate multiple corpses. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I believe the last question they asked was how we got in there. So Dr. Crud's going to say, well, we just walked in. We walk, I, Wade Bryant asked you one while we passed you. We, you know, we we're going to come down here and show him the thing, but, but then he had a heart attack. Um, this, this, the same person, just for clarity's sake, would say, sure, there's no one in there. I mean, the, the place is locked up. No one's allowed in there. Well, look through the... Look through the little hole. Okay, uh, that person will, will come down the stairs, look and go, It's dark. Because it is dark in there. It's dark. Can't well, see you, anything. Well, go get a torch. Go get a flashlight or something. 
Or eat one of these eggs <laughs> and use your mouth. <laughs> yeah, you want an egg? Here you go. No, thank you. But really, I, 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 I must insist. I'm, I'm, I'm terribly sorry, but um, rules are rules, and we've been, uh, you know, specifically instructed not to allow anyone down here. Uh, you're, you're right. Uh, no one should be down here. It was wrong of us to even try. We just got so um, curious about the basement because. <laughs> Our gracious host made such a big deal about it, and now we're here. We <laughs> just thought. Is this maybe, you trying to run out the clock on? Yeah, it yeah. is. <laughs> yes. On like maybe we. Could I'm. A, I'm, a, I'm just going to assume that, uh, <laughs> uh, like, create undead does have like some verbal component. It, right? uh yeah yeah verbal so, semantic so, material yeah. so we're so within the like the narrative of the spell you would have to be like doing magic -y words during magic -y words during this this whole minute <laughs> okay so, so on the on the off chance that the the magic words for creating a zombie or ghoul happens to be an excuse as to why you <laughs> you were down okay. in the basement well, that, that's okay. While he's doing the spell, Dr. Crud's doing the whole distraction of just trying to run out the clock, making up, making up excuses. Yeah. Um, however, I, w I will say that, you know, magic is quite obvious to notice, especially when your friend is going, Oh, you go, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Dr. Um, so, Crutch tries to position himself between Nesgrax and the other guys. You know, he's five feet wide. He should be able to hide that. I mean... So you don't block sound. <laughs> I want to. I want to know how close Olive Junior is to finding Olive. <laughs> okay, let's 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 cut up. Let's, let's let's leave that scene for a moment. It's all very awkward. You think I'm gonna help you or run away? Because like I'm not sure. We'll I find out here in a minute. I think if we're in trouble, you're gonna help us beat up thirty butlers. That would be an awesome scene. <laughs> Butler fight. <laughs> oh, like uh, the hallway scene in. Um, yeah, what's that yeah. Uh, Korean movie? Um, yeah. Oh, uh, what's it called? I know, right? Erg. And Spike Lee did a, an American yeah. version of it. Oh, what's it called? I know. Uh, I'm going to have to look it up now. <laughs> um, I will just say, though, that in terms of uh, like time synchronicity, um, unless um, old we're boy, in... Old boy. The Raid. No, old boy. Well, well, that's oh, another wait, good no. one. Sorry, but I'm thinking uh, of old boy. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I was just no. going to say, um, unless um, we're like actually in like an initiative order, that's when, as far as I'm concerned, the, like, the time like locks in. So doing like one thing won't necessarily take six seconds because that's a really long time. Well, not that's a really short time to like do something. Just think about it, like six seconds is not particularly long at all. So. Um, it just helps to like keep things a bit, um, a bit more manageable in terms of going. Well, this takes six seconds to do, because I can do this in combat. But anyway, mm -hmm. we'll we'll just cut up um, to <laughs> to follow Olive Junior as, as she like scampers uh, up the steps. Uh, how tall is Olive Junior, by the way? Uh, I wonder if there's anything that says specifically she is a. Uh... If not, you can just make it up. Uh, she's the size of a lizard. <laughs> so I'm okay, going to say, well, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, gecko or dragon? Five, five inches. Five she's inches. like a okay. gecko, yeah. She's like a very yeah, small okay. little gecko, yeah. Oh, a gecko is like an inch and a half at most. A leopard gecko is like, uh, like what Nesgrax is imagining. A also, they're gecko. very soft. You should touch a leopard gecko if you never have. They're really nice. Cool. Okay. Mm, uh, yeah. So Olive Junior like scampers up, uh, scampers up the steps to go and uh, find Olive, um, and manages to uh, find her using smell, um, and like is like scraping on the door to get um, into the master bedroom because obviously the handles are far too high. Um, so. Olive, just quit me. Give me a quick uh, perception check to see if you can hear the like <laughs> noise. 
Nine. Nine. I think you you can hear it, but you like you wake up a bit groggy and you're like, did I imagine that? Like, oh. But you just hear a sound at the door. You don't have to get up. The bed is still very comfortable. <laughs> the bed is very comfortable, but I love Olive Jr. I get up. For you, anything. Okay, uh, you go and open the door to find Olive Jr. Um, like, um, still trying to scratch midair. Um, oh, and, Olive Jr., and, um, hi! I love you, Olive Jr. Oh, and, and she can talk to you now, because uh, you understand each other. So she's like, Hello, I, I got sent by, 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 um, what's his name? Yeah, that guy. Tall, tall person. Yeah. Um, they're making a mess of things. It's going really badly. I wish I was your friend <laughs> instead of theirs. I think they'll get us all kicked out. I give her candy and I go to save the day. Um, Olive, uh, you start making your way down the stairs towards the, uh, the main entrance, um, and you know, because that feeds into the kitchen and do that. Uh, when you when you get down to the bottom, um, you do uh, run into um, like someone you haven't seen uh, before yet, um, uh, who like kind of walks up to you and just goes, "Excuse me, have you seen? Um, oh God, what was his name? Oh, sorry, I was sent to find someone, and um, it, this is not one of the butlers. So this is someone who, like someone actually at the party." Uh, talking to you, um, he, he's got a, like a very like um, tartan waistcoat. Let's just say he's got a got a kilt on. He's got his little little bag. Um, and he's like, sorry, uh, I know we're not meant to talk to the help, but I honestly, I'm not part of these people. And like, um, one of them asked me to find someone, and I've been looking like everywhere around. You know, I looked over in you know, like the like the bulls pitch. And no sign. I looked in the, the drawing rooms and the everywhere, and I I can't find them. Have you seen um, what was his name? It was um, Baron Bogglesworth? He's um, I think the last person who said they saw him was uh, maybe heading down to the basement. Yes, sir. They're by the buffet table. Oh, is that right? Thank you. Uh, and you. <laughs> I smile a crocodile smile and try to keep going. Although the player thinks that's the most interesting person at the party, Olive doesn't. Olive has friends, and they need her, because of course they do. Of course they do. Of course. What did you do this time? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you wander in through the kitchen, leaving him behind. Hang on, let me just check if you... I mean, he, he does notice you. Um, you know, he, He's walking off, but he does, like, out of the corner of his eye, just, he looks around for a moment. He notices like, the servant going to the kitchens? Yeah. Yeah. He's just like, I haven't seen you here before. Kind of thing. I know. I, I came with my masters. <laughs> yeah. Well, no. It's it's just because like you've been off asleep for however long. Oh yeah. So you haven't physically been um, downstairs at all. Uh, but yeah, you just uh, like wander into the kitchens. Um, at that point, like one of the one of the butlers does kind of like run out, go magic, magic. There's someone punch him, him, magic. Punch him. Knock punch him, him out right away. Punch him. Okay, straight off. <laughs> I, know you, I know you can hit like four times. Don't bother. 22 is the there first punch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you you punch the butler and then moment, like straight like right in the jaw. And I would like to make it look like if I can also get some silverware explosion going on, I will. <laughs> like, oh no, because oh, I was rounding a corner and they were too. And I took him out on accident with my knuckles and... <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So um, you like you open the doors of the kitchen. The butler starts running out, screaming, and you just like uh, swing your arm around and whack, like whack him like under the jaw. But their momentum like carries them like forward, and they start like sliding across the floor. We both go down. We take out a wedding cake. <laughs> okay. Um. He, he's like running from like from the kitchen into like the main hall. So. But yeah, yeah, they can be uh, like some like something hang, hanging around, like is um, like slide off in like um, hit like hit a wall and like a moose head falls down <laughs> on top of them. Okay, and so D and D rules are once a person is non lethally, which is what that was, damaged to the point of unconsciousness, which I think they were. Do you want me to roll damage because I have? A... Uh, no, don't worry about it. Okay, uh, they wake up in one d four hours. So if you'd yep. like to roll a d four. Okay. Yeah. No worries. Let me find it. 
Ooh. I see a D20, a D6, a D10. <laughs> Come on, dust bag. You want to borrow mine? Mine's right here. <laughs> That's all right. I, I, I found one. I had to Super empty every single dice I own out. Hang on, let me I'll, just yell. Yeah, just grab it through the screen. I try to pass it to the ca camera. <laughs> <laughs> Let's change color. Is that weird? Whoa. <laughs> okay, so listeners, what you missed is Dr. Fred the Third put one up to the camera and our DM took one away from Hang the on. camera. Hang <laughs> on. Like I, found, I found the right color if you want to try it again. Oh, okay, yeah, let's do it again. Okay, here, here you go. Here you go. Thank you. Whoa. Oh. How'd you do that? Oh, what an amazing <laughs> visual trick. Yeah. Uh, three, three hours to wake up from a, a moose related injury. Mm. Nice. I keep okay. going. I'm like, oh, no. And I run to the kitchens like that's the right answer. You know, anyone looking at me yeah. might judge me and say that's not the right thing to do. But it's definitely a believable thing for a servant to do. <laughs> <laughs> OK, yes, uh, you run into the kitchens. There are still like a number of butlers um, um, like stood by the door. Like uh, one of them like turns to you as you uh, walk in, and, like run in. Tail swap. It's like they also think you're a butler. so Because <laughs> there are... Ha Yes, I'd like them all to be unconscious. <laughs> well, how, how many did we decide there were? I, I don't think 30 is quite accurate <laughs> enough. Maybe 10. Well, we'll take uh, we'll take off one. So we'll call it nine butlers. <laughs> 10 butlers at the top of the stairs, 10 butlers to go. <laughs> Can we push him down Lock the stairs? Can we use take the first one? Take one down and push him down. Nine more butlers <laughs> on the yeah. top of the stairs. Bowling pins? Bowling pins down the stairs. Can I knock them all out? Ooh, how wide is the hallway? Um, let's see. How wide is? Maybe, uh, let's say about seven feet wide. I want to give credit and not a bit of space. Yes, I am eight feet wide with my tail. So I'd like to jump and horizontally, like death roll, and bowl all of them over and down the stairs. Wow. Okay. Um, they're they're all like stood like up the top of the. Uh, the stairs, like with the door, like peeking around still, while Nesgrax is going. Um, but the door does open. Hang on, I'm just figuring out how doors open. Do they open in? Let's see. If I was, I would probably make it open outwards into the corridor. So they're all like kind of leaning against it. So you can just totally barrel right into them and take, like, take as many out as possible. I would like to do that. Non-lethally damaging the NPCs. I get four hits per turn, per six seconds. So I um, wait. Just, just, just four, uh, make me one big, six. one, one big bash roll. Because if you if you're basically body slamming all of them at once, then it only really makes sense to make one roll. And also, I don't want to roll like nine things. So twenty-one to hit. I have a plus oh, okay. nine to hit yeah. nowadays. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll, that'll probably do. I mean, no, no one is looking towards you. I mean, one of them does like turn their head because they think they've sent like help, but no, yeah. it's just a, yeah. a crocodile lady running towards them to bash them into oblivion. Okay, they all go like, <laughs> like flying down the corridor, landing at like awkward angles. You definitely hear a snap or two. The best part of this. You can specify martial combat in D&D &D to be non-lethal damage. So that's right. Without any threat or hint or danger of death, I have bowling pinned people <laughs> downstairs. I mean, they're not going to have fun when they wake up, but they're not dead. Yeah. I, I would be a lot more adventurous in real life if there was no danger of dying when I flung myself and others downstairs. <laughs> yeah, when I injure other people, it'd be really nice if they just didn't die. Yeah. <laughs> but while we wait for... Uh the dead guy to wake up. Dr. Cred's going to go to <laughs> all the... <laughs> the uber violent crocodile death toll zero. <laughs> the elephant doctor and... <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. Not an elephant doctor, just the Nesgrax. Yeah, really? <laughs> just our, our well-meaning cheating wife lady is the highest death count of them all. But yeah, yeah. Dr. Crud will be setting broken bones and, you know, Making sure that when they do wake up, they're not mortally injured. While we wait for the dead guy to wake up. I'm going to go back up to the top of the stairs, and I'm going to see if anyone comes to investigate. Okay, um, up at the top of the stairs, like um, just walking out into the kitchen, um, obviously no one's left in there anymore. Um, you <laughs> poke your head out uh, to like the main entryway. Um, 
Oh no, there... I am standing in the oh, kitchen still waiting for someone still else in the to, come in the for to come in the kitchen. I am a spider pit trap. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um actually, uh Olive, give me a quick perception check. Seventeen. Um you start to hear like rumblings like outside of slightly grumpy party guests uh being like I'm sure the sh- they said the shrimp would arrive. Um, post haste. This is very much post post haste. We're missing a lot of our food. What could be, possibly be going on in the kitchens? Uh, but that that's like from a like like really far away. But a bit closer, you do hear like um, almost as if someone's squatting down and be like, "Oh, this is strange. We got how have you managed to trip over and have a moose land on you?" Oh. <laughs> I recognize the tartan wearing friend and I take the tray of whatever that rich dude wanted and I hand it to him quickly and I say, quickly, the butler has knocked himself out. He's such a fool. Take this tray. All right. I press well, it into his hands. I'm, I'm, you don't mind me asking, like, what is going on in there? There's I, no I time. Have, like... <laughs> I mean, it like, it's, it's, oh. Honestly, it's shrimp. Like, I don't care about these people. Like, it can go to hell for all I care. But, like, what is, like, I mean, you don't have to tell me. Once again, I don't care. But, like, there was a lot of crashing and everything. But, I mean, if you're up for, like, up to anything, like, to screw these guys over, you know, if you want a bit of a hand... Honestly, <laughs> narrative, hammer, olive, crocodile head. <laughs> I'm, I DM, I see that you would like this guy to join our party. And I know that he is definitely the most intriguing. And I mean, let's face it, player wants to know, but crocodile brain small, tray of food pressed into hands. That's fair enough. So if you're like, okay, yeah, no worries. Yeah, I like, so, I can't wait to find out after the game who it, that it, was it and what I missed out on. Wander off looking kind of confused and like, hmm. Okay. Role playing. All right. So now that I have fixed your problem and I go back down the stairs talking to my friends who are reviving a freaking corpse, <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> well, he killed someone. Nesgrax, you finally got to use your powers. Great job. I'm still, I'm still going. 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 I'm uh, just running back through quickly again the, the whole uh, ghoul stuff. Uh, was there anything mentioned about uh, like retaining like, um, like knowledge or characteristics or anything like that? So Because like mm. some necromancy stuff does have um, um, that stuff. The uh, So the corpse becomes a ghoul. So it has the statistics of a ghoul. Um, yeah, I don't think it retains any of its like living knowledge or anything like that. Okay, I mean, that's all right. We just needed to open the stupid door. Mm-hmm. All right, D and D Beyond says ghouls have an intelligence score of seven and the ability to understand and speak common. Oh, great! So he could have come out and been like, "It's fine." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I say, judging. <laughs> 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 well i mean it i'm i'm just having a read myself it does say devourers of flesh um yeah they're real hungry mm-hmm. yeah um they also are immune to mind affecting spells such as sleep Ooh. so after he so, opens the door we just set him loose on the rich people uh when it can't feed on the dead it pursues living creatures and attempts to make corpses of them when they're not under the control of a necromancer which it yeah. is right now yeah yeah <laughs> So I think this is going to go interesting. Good job, Nesgrex. You made a ghoul and can control it for 24 hours. Nesgrex is like out of breath from like doing all the talking and the the spell casting in one breath. And he's like, I know, I've been waiting a long time to do this. I'm so excited. And thanks to all of there's no witnesses to your magic. (laughs) For one hour at least. (laughs) Yeah, let me let me let me actually. I will just like roll one d4 for all nine other butlers. Uh, 
Yeah, you've got one hour on the clock until these guys wake up in considerable pain. Cool. All right, Nazi, can you get this door open now? Yeah. Uh, Hey, cool. Um, Open the door. Okay. um, The M is going to need just one moment to have a quick quick time out myself and have a think. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. All right, well, while he does that, I'm going to go get a drink. I'll be right back. That's right, listeners. Go drink. <laughs> <laughs> I am very intrigued about that. I'm very intrigued in him, but like oh. this like internal, do I override the role-playing? Because Olive wouldn't. Uh, sure, Olive sure. Olive has no interest in other people. Mm-hmm. She's just not curious. Mm-hmm. But... Yeah, I'm curious. She sure can beat up butlers, which is exactly what we needed at the time. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> you guys. I was having a nice nap. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry yeah. that Nezzy had to go kill someone <laughs> very painfully. Yeah, that's pretty evil. Good job. That, 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 was, a, that was a torture death. It was a fast one, I think. It well, wouldn't be Aya Cook approved. Physically, it was fast, but mentally, it probably lasted a thousand years. Oh, mm. yeah, like that death dream thing that people, like, they'll have this entire show, and at the very end, they'll say, this entire show was a dream in the moments before your brain died. Whoa. So, like, it was like a thousand-year-long saga. Like, all of Firebreathing Kittens could fit within that man's dream. <laughs> what and it was all about? torture. What? What are you talking about? Is this from a show or like it's a... It's a trope, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's a bunch of animes where someone... Um, it's an isekai is the trope of anime, and they get hit by a bus, and then they wake up in another world. Oh, gotcha. And the, the like ongoing joke with that is that the fantasy world doesn't exist, and the only true reality of the show that happened is the first five seconds where they got hit by a bus. Hmm. Gotcha. So that's isekai anime, the joke. It's not a joke. It's not funny. <laughs> okay, I figured it out. Okay. I had to rework it a little bit, but I think it'll, I think it'll work. <laughs> Did we screw crossed. everything up? <laughs> we broke the DM. Not everything. <laughs> <laughs> I reject your narrative hammer. <laughs> I reject your reality and substitute my own. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you, like... You order the the ghoul you've just created. You build a ghoul um, to <laughs> grab a ghoul. Yeah, we'll, do, we'll call it grab a ghoul um, to like unlock the door. Uh, it, from behind, you see it like shuffle over. It does speak common, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, but if, okay. if that's what it's saying, that's fine. You just woke up. Yeah, I think it's probably <laughs> grumbling. Yeah. <laughs> Fine. Um, so you hear like a, a heavy like click and the door will um, open um, in front of you. Um, and behind it, there is a regular, you know, a wine cellar. But um, there's on a table, um, where, you know, with like racks of like those like latticey um, like wine bottles. Mm-hmm. Um and there are some like large casks, you know, those like really like big, like m- almost like metery level um, ones, which um, like take up like part of the wall. There are a couple of those hanging around. Um, mm-hmm. On a table in the middle of the uh, the cellar is like one very old, very dusty bottle of wine. You and think this little, was and, and and a note on it. Well, a note next to it um, saying. Uh, this was a very good year, and we'll show you the way. This was a very good year, and we'll show you the way. Okay. This was a very good year, and we'll show you the way. Okay. You think this was worth the man's life, Nancy? Uh, well, well, hold on, man. Jeez. We only... T- it sounds very <laughs> puzzle-like. Why don't you... <laughs> Jeez, I don't think we just did this all for a bottle of wine. I think there's something more here. Um, Hey, uh, Ghoulie, um... Pick up that bottle of wine and show it to me. Wanders over, picks up the bottle of wine, uh, kind of presents it to you. Uh, <laughs> and I, I want to read the label and look at the year. 
Um, it's a very uh, dusty bottle. It says, actually, what what year is it in uh, our current timeline? In uh, in our forty nine five nine four. Wow, forty nine five nine four. Okay. Uh, so we'll say it's about two hundred and fifty years old. Okay. Um, and it's got like a picture of a rose on it. Let's say. Okay. So it's a very good year, and we'll show you the way. Actually, the the goal knows what's up. So if you, <laughs> you go, you push in place. Oh, okay. Thanks, Ghoulie. And I, I, I tell him put 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 the Speed bottle in up the narrative. And put the <laughs> bottle put the bottle where where it should be, please. Okay, you are taskmaster. <laughs> well, yeah. No rest even for dead. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, and also, I'm suddenly ravenous for living flesh. Can you bring me some of that? <laughs> the ghoul asks you. Well, Olive does have a lot of dog flesh available. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry, man. We got you covered. You guys haven't seen Hemingway recently. <laughs> <laughs> True. <gasps> you didn't. I didn't. <laughs> you don't know whether I did or not. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so he's both alive and dead. <laughs> Schrodinger's Hemingway. Yeah. Hemingway's dog. <laughs> Okay, uh, so the the ghoul just um, wanders over, uh, finds the correct year um, on the, um, like in the um, lattice wine holder thing. There's probably a real name, shelf, that's it. Uh, right here on the wine shelf, uh, slots the bottle in, and there is a, a loud click as um, one of the like uh, sides of the giant casks rolls away um, along some like track if you can imagine like just the the end of it just rolls away leaving like uh this like passageway going deeper deeper down mm-hmm. and uh everyone give me a perception check just to see how what you what you gain from all this 23 23 19 19 Do- for olive dr crud's too busy pulling all the bodies into the cellar because that's a four. Yeah, Doctor Crod <laughs> is stacking bodies and like, like m- putting them into like a Jenga pile. You know, three by three, <laughs> rotates a- three by three yep. pile of Jenga bodies. <sighs> it's, it's the new hit hit game, yeah. body Jenga. <laughs> okay, um, from like this passageway, there's this like you get a waft of air that um like flows over you it, it smells kind of like metallic and a bit weird and also you hear um what seems to be some level of low chanting coming from deep down the passageway okay lead lead the way ghouli <laughs> hey ghouli you remember like all the stuff uh, what you a part of? Mm, me not have clearance level, me merely facilitator. That's fair. I understand that. I'm just a butler myself. We help. Well, we clean up messes, don't we? Sometimes part of mess. Sometimes made yeah. mess of. I give you some collie meat. Oh. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> Tasty flesh. It's different when you read about it in a textbook. It's... <laughs> this is what you wanted. Yeah, there's a lot more guilt tripping in practical necromancy. Oh yeah, Nesgrex, you can use this for your senior project. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I should really incriminate myself in this way, but yeah, you know, I could make it anonymous or something. Yeah. I mean, he really did have a heart attack. Physically, if they examine, that's what they'll find. A bunch of necrotic heart tissue. Yeah. Yeah. It was because you scared him to death, but, like, really. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Okay, so you have this, um, like, dark, long passageway. It smells, like, kind of weird. You hear some, like, low levels of chanting uh, coming from there. Um, you have a, a pile of bodies, which the ghoul is looking hungrily towards. I take out my little baggie, and I take the little baggie, and I reach inside it, 
and I get dust and I sprinkle it over all of us and we all turn invisible. Ooh. This is the second time I've had this happen to me today. And I gotta say, the first time was more pleasant because I didn't have all this dust on me. <laughs> yeah. It's in my nose. <laughs> <laughs> Hope the sneezing doesn't come back to haunt us later. And then, to read this out loud, what I just did to everybody was, dust of disappearance resembles very fine sand. There's enough of it for one use. Throw the dust in the air. Everyone, blah, 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 rolling a dice. Ooh, okay. We are now invisible for six minutes. Also, you and each creature and object within ten feet of you, so so is, like, the wine rack and the dead bodies and the ghoul. <laughs> Oh, that's what we, want, what we want, an invisible ghoul that wants to eat people. <laughs> <laughs> How long does it last for? Like the Six invisible? minutes this Six time. Six minutes. Okay. Well, yeah, then, not yeah. super long. Like Yours he'll, is way longer. but He'll be visible way before he becomes a flesh-eating monster. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like 24 hours on that. Yeah. Um, if a creature affected by the dust attacks or casts a spell, the invisibility ends for that creature just to let you guys know. Heads up. Cool. Okay, so we're invisible and we're we're being led by Ghouli down the hallway, the dark passage. You, can, I mean, you can order him to lead you down there if you wish. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Ghouli, lead the way. I imagine you'd all have to like hold hands, right? Because yeah, <laughs> Ghouli, hold my hand. <laughs> Olive, you hold my hand, and then Crud, okay. hold Olive's hand. It will be okay. Yeah, go ahead, Ghoulie. Okay, the the ghoul starts to lead you down um, <laughs> this uh, dark passageway. The um, the smell starts getting stronger, and the chanting seems to be getting louder as you uh, walk down the passageway until you pass like an archway, uh, which leads you into um, a large stone circular chamber. Um, got like dark stone walls um you've got like columns um like surrounding it as ivy growing um up uh the sides of the walls um there's a plinth uh just in the middle of the room um which has like a sheet draped over it which seems to have some sort <laughs> of uh body underneath it um there are let's see. <laughs> You know how like you take shortcuts in games and like then sometimes like stuff like um because like there are some um I can't remember which game it was, but you can like end up killing like the bad guy like right at the beginning of the game and then it just cuts to like an end cutscene in a much cooler area. <laughs> <laughs> um it's a little bit like that, the shortcut, but not quite so extreme, hopefully. Um there are a number of figures um, stood around like this plinth in a like a circle, um, and they're the ones that are the chanting. They're wearing like robes and hoods. You know the deal with these kind of um, situations. They're just going una una quadracuna una una quadracuna. You know we've all heard that that line before. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Your una, entrance. Una quadracuna. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we all know that's a it's a it's a banging tune. Yeah. Um, everyone, just give me a uh, a stealth check while we're while we're here, just to make sure that uh, none of Nesgrex's bad luck has rubbed off on anyone. And invisibility gives us advantage, correct? Or is uh, it a plus yeah. ten? Non natural um, twenty. All right. Um, you can have advantage if you want. I'd go for, but just give me a general gist. So that's going to be a nineteen. Okay. Going well 29. So far. Going excellent. Okay. Hang on, let me roll for the for the ghoul. Okay, the ghoul rolled an eight, but I, I won't like, I won't let that stop you. You enter this room and just like observe these people like stood like chanting over this like um like um covered corpse on a plinth. Um and then you know, a few moments pass as you take in uh, your surroundings. Uh, but then a little while um, later, like, um, yeah, a short, a short while later, you hear, like, the pads of feet behind you 
as uh, walking through the door, well, it's not really a door, walking uh, up through the passageway behind you, um, you turn, like, in your invisible forms and see Hemingway the dog just padding along. Um, who then, like, uh, pads up to the rest of the the, the uh, cloaked figures who don't seem uh, too uh, put off by his arrival. And he looks up at all of them and says, Welcome, everybody. I should so- have eaten that dog, everybody. <laughs> yeah, you should have. <laughs> it's so good to see you all here. I thought um, we may have been waylaid in that nasty business back in Nicomoy, but... I'm glad you all made it out, uh, mostly safe and sound. Um, Clive, you appear to have a bit of... Ah, yeah, the... So, oh, you always had one arm. Okay, never mind, sorry. <laughs> anyway, I'm I'm glad you all made it. And go, goes, oh, yeah, sorry, this this form is rather a bit basic, isn't it? It's, it's good. Some, do something a bit more extravagant. Oh, um, no. So his form, like, shimmers... I told Hemingway that they were all changelings. Great. So, mm-hmm. all right. And I didn't have to do an insight check or anything. I confronted the dog with the knowledge that, okay, all right. Yep. It was like the first thing you said. <laughs> <laughs> well. um, the uh, the uh, form shimmers and like um, straightens and becomes much more humanoid. And I think, um, yeah. Nesgrex, have you come across uh, Yule Sevchenko yet, or is it just Crud and Olive? Uh, I think it's just Crud and Olive. I, I don't, yeah, I'm okay. not familiar so with these guys. Crud, I don't think Crud Olive has. Who? Okay, well, Crud most certainly recognizes the figure of uh, Yule Sevchenko. Um, I, I think you'd probably go, is that bastard? Like, under your breath. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's to, like... To let, let the others know. That's him. Like, it's him. That's him. We need to get that thing. Beep. Yeah. Beep. 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 <laughs> uh, so, like, he, he's continuing his um, like evil monologue and going. Now we've had to move up if, uh, the timing of this due to rather unforeseen circumstance. It seems there have been people asking about us at the party upstairs. I would have liked to. Bring the rest of the, uh, the rest of the people there. I, I would have liked, surely, to see them crumble at the sight of what we're about to unleash. But you know, needs must um, move up the timetable and all that. So, I think, therefore, brothers, sisters, cousins, I guess, still a bit weird, Jerry. I don't know what to tell you. I think it's time that we get on with business. And the chanting starts to become louder and louder as everyone starts to get a bit more into it. Tell your ghoul to go eat. What? What? Invisibly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Invisible eat. You want want the invisible ghoul to go eat this guy? No, not him. The other ones. He is mine. Oh. Oh, okay. Well, uh, uh, (laughs) I'll I'll keep that in my back pocket. How about (laughs) that? It's like, he really wants to see how this monologue goes. Yeah. <laughs> Interrupting the monologue is so passe. Hopefully it's less than six minutes long. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, yeah, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Okay. Uh, it's it's not every day that... Uh, sorry, I'm not used to not having an audience for these sorts of things, but hey, needs must. Um, it's not every day you rebirth a god, but... It seems um, time is right for um, restoring our uh, our master Quadracoon to his mortal form. All right, so I'm going to whisper to my friends. They don't appear to be sacrificing anybody. Let them? Uh, bring a god back? Why? I mean, if god is dead, that really sucks. Like, shouldn't <laughs> they if, be brought back? If Not if they're evil. Yeah, it sort of depends, on if there's like a lot of really bad gods. If so. this guy's bad, that means the god probably's bad. We don't want them around. But they'll be really tired afterwards, and then when they go to sleep tonight, we can grab Yule. 
Or we could just send the ghoul in to go eat his friends while we grab him in the confusion. I, I, All right, well, I, yeah. Olive is going to go with what you guys are going to do. But if Olive had a vote, she would let the god get revived, totally hide, and then or just like, no, head out and then like get Hemingway tonight when they think they're safe in their bed. But <laughs> hey, that's how crocodiles think. So keep going. <laughs> Plus, we have no idea even if they're going to stay the night anymore. It would make just start chaos right away. Mm-hmm. Everyone sleeps. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Now, where was I? <laughs> That's the thing about monologues. You kind of got to keep going with it. Otherwise, you're like, now, where was I? They were going to bring up, bring the god back to life. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 right, yeah. Right. You wanted me to stop that. So I'm invisible. So I will carry the ghoul up with me. And um, like, I'm going to aim the ghoul at this person's throat. <laughs> 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 Bite down, ghoul. Because I'll still be invisible. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> the DM looks so unhappy. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not trying to upset you. I think at that point, if you're using a ghoul to attack someone, then it counts as you making the attack. Okay, then I won't. I will simply set the ghoul near the person, and some stuff may happen. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm just imagining it like a pair of like tree loppers. You're holding the ghoul by his like, legs, and you just bring them together, and it goes chomp. <laughs> so it's like a sentient pair of loppers. Right. Yeah. Totally not doing that. Just going to set the ghoul down next to the leader, Hemingway. I knew I didn't like dogs. No. Okay. Not him. Um, not him. Not him. What are the other guys? Hemingway needs got the information we need. They don't lose the information if they're ghouls. Ooh. Uh, uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Tell a ghoul to eat him. Uh, well, that's Nesgrax's job. I'm just going yeah. to facilitate. <laughs> seems, Maybe. This seems, um, uh, I, think, I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I don't know, guys. I don't. I don't think ghouls actually remember things. I think old Ghoulie over here is just sort of an exception to the rule because he's so dumb. Well, then tell them. Tell him to eat everybody else except for the leader. Oh. oh okay. Ghoulie, go get everyone. Um, RPG Stack Exchange says they do have clear memories of their former lives. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. Great. Okay. So, yeah. Ghoulie. Libris Mortis. Eat them. Oh, great. We can, they can have drinks afterwards. Go get them. Uh, so I want to do that, but in addition, just to um, uh, liven things up a bit and also <laughs> give us a better chance of getting, um, what's his name? Cochain? What's his name? Uh, which who? Oh, um, the boss. The, uh, it was, the, uh, yeah, the boss guy. Hemingway. Yul Sevchenko. Hemingway has turned into this this guy, right? Into the guy that we want. Yeah. yeah. Yus- Yusuf. Okay. Yusuf? Uh, Yul. Yul. Yul Shevchenko. Yeah. Yul. <laughs> okay. Cool. So, uh, in addition to telling Ghouli to do that, I'm going to take out my bag of tricks and I'm going to take out three <laughs> uh, animals <laughs> and throw three animals into into the mix. <laughs> and send those guys out. So the bag of tricks, it's an ordinary bag. It's a tan bag of tricks, I've decided, and that uh, I can take out these fuzzy little balls and throw them out, and they turn into random animals based on a roll of a D8. Yeah. Okay, so okay, I'm rolling three D8s. So I got a five, a five, and a seven. So that's going to be a black bear. <laughs> Two black bears and a giant hyena, <laughs> <laughs> and I I tell all of them to to get get all the people, but leave uh the guy in the middle for us. Okay, what's the ghoul doing? Okay, so the ghoul is going to go up to the nearest guy and just start eating him. Okay, um. I, I will I will say they will notice that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay, just, just so you're aware, it's quite difficult to do that stealthily. Yes. Okay. I can imagine. 
So he's gonna bite. So he's got a plus two to hit. Um, what do I what do I attack with? Uh, oh, there's dual stats. I can send them to you. Do I roll? Do I just roll? Um, you've, uh, you've got a plus two to hit. Um, just ghoul call it a stats. bite. They're, yep. Here, I'm sending yeah, you the dual stats in the chat. Oh, it's two d six plus two. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm I'm looking at the stats. I just didn't realize where where to look. Yeah. Okay. So it's two d six. So that was. A four plus two, so that should be six to hit, I guess. Oh, okay. Yeah. Don't worry about the damage in that case. Okay. Um, so, well, I mean, if you roll a six to hit, that's quite low in anyone's book. Sure. Yeah, it's true. It is low. Uh, and then I'm going to, okay, let's look up Black Bear. <laughs> well, so the thing about claws is that if you claw someone with your ghoul, they're paralyzed for one minute. Oh, and when they're paralyzed, paralysis grants advantage, and then I do 20, 20, 20, 20 damage to them. What? So, like, yeah, like, ridiculous damage. Well, wait, no, what's my plus six? So I do, because every, <sighs> let me look up the paralyzed rules. But yeah, if you could have your ghoul scratch you. Subject to, <laughs> subject to a constitution saving throw. Yeah, but if your ghoul scratches. And also you've got a hit. Yule, it's, it's great. Giant hyena. What do you got? Okay. So, um, so sorry. Are you looking up ghoul stuff? I found paralyzed. Oh, okay. Automatically fails strength and dexterity saving throws. Attack rolls against the creature have advantage. So yeah, if you could paralyze someone with a monk in the party, it's a good day. Because mm. I get four hits. So if I get those hits, uh, attack rolls against the creature with advantage have advantage any attack that hits the creature is a critical hit if the attacker is within five feet of the creature so paralysis plus monk is good combo because a critical hit means that i get um the number of dice that i do plus the number of dice that i do again plus my modifier which is uh six so i would do on average four plus four plus six ten four times so i would do 40 damage per turn if i'm attacking on average if i'm attacking a paralyzed person okay so, Math. I mean, <laughs> um, so that'll be cool for like my next turn, right? Because I've already rolled this guy to bite, yeah. right? Okay. I explained that during our free action speak. In you did. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Have your ghoul claw Yule. The end. Gotcha. Can I can I do something for the animals to do? <laughs> can I roll for them? Yeah, certainly. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I've got two black bears here. Um, they're going to do some claws. There's two of them. And it's 2d4 plus 2. Oh, my God. So that was a 2 for one of them. Oh, the other one was an 8. And then the giant hyena can do a bite, and that'll be 2d6 plus 3. That'll be a 10 plus 3, 13. Okay, so your hyena gets through. I think the, the bears are probably a bit sluggish, I think, from just being summoned. So they're kind of like raw and like try and take a swipe at someone, but they duck. Same mm -hmm. with another one. They like swipe at the feet and they kind of like jump because summoning a bear is, you know, once again, that will be noticed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Agreed. Um, but they're, they're, let's say that they're so preoccupied. Everyone is so preoccupied by the bears that have turned up that one of them does not notice the fact the hyenas just rocked up as well, which then bites them on the leg. Uh, for how many damages? Uh, what do I do? Do I? How do I roll damage for this? I've never like used a monster, like a like a like an animal to attack before. <laughs> so I think. Uh... Is that right? Am is I it a this? hyena or a giant hyena? Giant giant hyena. So, is it... Is it... Uh... Okay, so the giant hyena in 5e has a bite attack, plus 5 to hit, reach 5 feet, 1 target. So it moves its movement, which is 50 feet, it runs forward. Mm. And then it... Hyenas have bone-crushing jaws, so it's going to go for probably, like, crunching, like taking out a limb or something. Okay. Like probably the ankle and just breaking someone's ankle by biting through it. So you're going to roll a d20. Oh, okay. Tell me the number. Gotcha. What's the number? The number is 10. Plus 5 to hit. That means that you have a 15 to hit against this NPC that ah. probably hits. NPCs suck. 
Okay. Then you're going to do 2d6 plus 3, which on average is 3. Oh, uh, I was rolling the damage for the hit. So you, you would just do 9 damage. when you, you can take averages, and it's okay. It's not okay. great, but when you have 10 minutes left in your game, you can do it. So let's do that. So you do 9 damage. Yep. Okay. Cool. So the average of a dice is the middle number. So if it's yeah. like a d6, it's a 3 or right, 4 right. or something, whatever. Yeah. Sometimes you round up on that stuff, but yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So just take the average damage for this combat because we have 10 minutes left in the game. Sure. So we're saying nine? Yep. Cool. Nine. <laughs> damage. Okay. So um, you, well, your hyena has like, torn the calf of one of the... Um, one of the, one of the hooded people. So we'll just take them out of the game if they're like, like lying on the floor, like screaming, like calf muscle torn out. Um, I think at this point, um, as uh, we, I don't think at this point we'll need to roll initiative. Um, it's not going to be a formal combat. Um, we'll just go for a, a crud. Um, how do you help this chaos involved? Oh, I'm going behind Yosunko and just grabbing him. Okay. Okay, just like um like trying to restrain him. Yep. Okay, um that will be a cont- contested if I can say the word, right? Uh strength roll. So just roll me a a strength <laughs> and we'll see who comes out on top. Oh, I already did. It's a twenty four. Okay, yeah, I rolled an eight, so <laughs> it's likely going to be somewhere in the realm of a seven to a nine. So yeah, um, you um, with the chaos of like a giant hyena, two bears, um, you sneak up behind him or like in front of him. Really, you you can just grab him and like pin him like against the plinth, like by his neck. Um, I think at this point you would probably turn invisible. I didn't think you mind at this yeah. point, do you? Because I, I think everyone else is going to start panicking due to the fact that there are, there are two big-ass bears and a giant hyena running around the place. Mm-hmm. So they're going to like panic and start trying to run off. Well, um, the visibility drops right when uh, I attack them anyway, so... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, can I, can I go up to Crud and he's got... Uh, What's his name? You, what, say his name again. Yule. Yule. It's like Christmas, but Yule. Old, okay. Old version of Christmas. So I want to point at Yule, and I, I I point to the animals eating people in the ghoul, and I say to him, "Do you want to get out of here?" <laughs> um. So he is like pinned to pinned by his throat to the like the plinth and goes, "Bit weird to be hitting on me right now." No, <laughs> I mean, do you want to leave this place? <laughs> what, alive? Yes, do you want to get out of here so you don't get eaten by a thing? Well, I mean, I don't really care. I've done my job. Oh, God. <laughs> Fine. Uh, cool. Okay. You want to just make him in the ghoul so we just get the information out of him that easy? Uh... Yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> we could do that. So, uh, we gotta kill him. No, just Crud slits his throat. <laughs> okay. This is his mortal enemy. We're the good guys. I like my friends. <laughs> All of us are cool people, and I am not regretting coming here with you guys. <laughs> okay, uh, what do you slit his throat with? My bone saw. Okay. <laughs> uh, you, you take your bone saw out and, you know, do that. I'm not going to describe it too much, but it's it's quite a messy job because bone saws are bone saws. Um, the blood like spurts out of his neck, and like he starts like gagging and trying to you know breathe. Um, the blood like um, spurts like right onto the plinth he's um, like leaning against, and the plinth starts glowing. There's the Ooh. sacrifice. Oh Suckers. crap! Oh. Ha! I am happy about this. Um, uh, while you, while you, while you're holding his uh, soon-to-be lifeless form against it, um, wait, the... wait, it's not lifeless yet. I save him. Soon to be. <laughs> okay, I give how, him a how healing would... potion. What, 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 what would that look like? Because like, I, all right, I, it's, it's, it's a picture. 
It's the oh, blood, yeah, yeah. not I the life. The bottle and I put it in the throat so that he'll actually be able to drink it to his stomach. Oh, I see. <laughs> it's messy. Okay. <laughs> I mean, he'd have real difficulty swallowing what with those cords being severed, but. But okay, okay. Let's go with it. Let's go with it. So you like, um, like <laughs> shove this like potion down his throat, literally. And it, yeah, it comes out the other end. Um, <laughs> no, it goes down. It's like starts to like heal up a bit. I mean, it's not going to be like instantaneous, but uh, the major bloodletting has stopped. However, the the the, uh, the plinth is still growing, and underneath the sheet I mentioned, there's a a, a glowing. Um, you see eight like red pinpricks start to light up and grow larger and larger and larger as um, the whole sheet itself with um, the body underneath it lifts up. So you'll understand why I'm going so hard on this in a moment because um, it starts um, like li- it lifts up and um, a breeze out of nowhere uh, just takes the sheet uh, flying off and the body lands back on the plinth, like staring at all of you. And this is what what appears to be to you as four raccoons fused together at the tail. So if you imagine like a windmill, <laughs> windmill blades, but of raccoons. It's a raccoon king. Not quite. This is <laughs> uh, this this is the Lord as they were they were chanting Quadracoon. Quadracoon. Ah. Now it yes, okay. Um, who like stares at you with mean eyes, and as you all like stood there with like uh, with one voice and four, uh, speaks to you and says, "Interesting." What's that? I, well, I was told you were mm, a bit of a, a wet blanket, you lot, but you really did a number on these guys. They were just trying to do what I ordered them to. You didn't have to do all that, surely. So Are you're the saying little raccoon mouths like taking turns to say each word? Oh no, they're all doing it at the same time. But each um. one has mm-hmm. like a different pitch. So it's all all sound very discordant and mm. kind of kind of it's creepy. Way less cute. Yeah. Yes, way less cute. So you're saying you've been giving the orders, so you're the boss. Well, in a way, I merely order these petty mortals about, and they well, they they do my bidding. And just between us, seeing as very few of us are going to leave this place alive, I'm just lending these guys uh, out as a service to a dear old friend of mine who um, promised he would be able to get me back to this mortal plane as he once did. Who's your friend? I'm glad you brought that up, Nesgrax. Oh, God. I've heard so much about you. (laughs) It's Mephistopheles, isn't it? Hmm. Of course it is. Uh, Of course it is. You know he's still out to get you. You know you... Your betrayal couldn't possibly stand. Yeah. And you remember in Emmental Tales when he told you that himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I knew this was coming. You could have warned me. Sorry. <laughs> you were there. <laughs> yeah, you were there. You oh, saw. Yeah. You were there. <laughs> we shared a cheese dream. We were bunnies together. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> These mortals may call me a god, but Prince of Hell, mm, God, it's much the same sort of thing, but now I return to my mortal form, such as it is, I can wreak havoc on this pitiful plane. I don't really care for Mephistopheles, seems to a bit too much of a planner, but this was just the way to get my form back. Can you start with these people here in this room? Oh, gladly. Thank you. They, they've they served their purpose very much. And I have no further use of any of them. And it, <laughs> the raccoon's eyes start to glow. And you feel like this pulsating um, draw of magic. It's more of a, like a magical sucking sort of a feeling. As all the people 
like around you who are trying to leave st- suddenly like freeze in place, including Yule. And they all freeze in place and like start almost like folding in on themselves as they you can see Yule's face, it starts to you know, almost like dry up and like dry out as you can more or less see all his life force being drained from him. As with everyone else, they fall to their knees and just you hear like breaths escape them, but no more. Hmm. Dr. Cud, you said this guy was yours. You failed. Yeah. Well, I only failed because you shoved a thing down his throat. <laughs> you really biffed it there, Crud. <laughs> yeah, I, that's all on Olive. Uh, okay. Besides, he's there's still a body. He, Nez, he can bring him back as a, a ghoul, and uh, we could have our fun with him then. Oh, yeah, I suppose I could. Uh, so, uh, uh, Quadracoon. <laughs> you rang. Uh, we're just going to skedaddle now. <laughs> it was nice to meet you. I mean, normally I would very much like to kill you all, petty mortals, and be on my merry way, but I've just had a look at the time, and I think it's... <laughs> <laughs> Probably about best we went our separate ways for the time being. Honestly, well, you seem to be Mephistopheles' um, game, so I will leave you to it and tell him I say thanks. I say, um, well, if you see him, could you give him a message for me? Uh, yeah, sure. Well, and I hold out both my fingers and I cast teleport. <laughs> 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 and I teleport all of us uh including the body i don't know if i can do that dr crud will grab yule so when he gets teleported the body gets teleported to yeah i i sent us all back to the guild okay Dang. isn't there a range on isn't there a range on teleport uh uh no or is it actually just like any so, place you've so already the, been yeah i can i can get anybody in within 10 feet um, to come with me. I can, I can have up to eight willing creatures. Um, and if it's like a place that's, oh, so you got to roll, actually. You got to roll like a D100 to see if I'm on target or not. <laughs> no, oh. okay. The destination you choose must be known to you, and it must be on the same plane of existence as yeah. you. So, Your familiarity with the destination determines whether you arrive there successfully. DM, roll a D100 and consult this target. Because you are, uh, it's very familiar. I would say on target from 25 to 100, off target 14 to 24, similar 16 to thir- 6 to 13, and mishap 1 to 5. Yep. Okay, I rolled a 7. Okay. Well, that's so, a similar guild, but similar, not the right one. Similar okay. area. So the moody booksellers are like, I'm so glad that those fire-breathing kittens are... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, cut back to Nicomoy. Uh, the moody booksellers are, like, um, reco- like they're still tidying up um, from the mishaps at Guildfest. They're, like, stacking their books. They're making sure they're in, like, proper alphabetical order. They've got a load of, like, scrolls neatly stacked. They're, like, made everything, like, really presentable. They're like, finally, we're done. And then there's just, just this flash and... An elephant, a crocodile, Nezgrax, and a corpse. <laughs> <laughs> just walk into drop. a bar. Oh, oh! Could I? <laughs> could I also say that I, I brought Ghoulie with us as well? Because I, I can't leave Ghoulie uh, how, just just running uh, around. <laughs> okay, yeah, up yeah, to yeah. eight willing creatures, yeah, or objects carried by willing creatures, yeah. In the case of Yule's corpse, uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I think he's forced to be willing in this case. Yeah, yeah, but but yeah, oh, okay. And so on the way out, I shout, "Good luck!" Kilt wearing dude, bye. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, we'll they now live in, in a, well, they're currently in a house um, above the kind of a lord of hell. So I don't see that going amazingly for them. But yeah, the moody booksellers are just like stacking up. They're like, finally, we're done. <laughs> and an elephant, a crocodile, a dragonborn, a corpse, and a ghoul just flash out of nowhere. Not to mention, <laughs> hang on. And the, uh, Jenny and does uh, Olive, Olive Junior, Junior count in all this? Yep, I think that's enough. Yeah, um, 
just there's a flash of light they just appear out of nowhere and crash on top of all their newly stacked books and as you run out of the books <laughs> the book moody booksellers guild they're like fire breathing kittens <laughs> they shake their fist after you it's benny hill music that's what you get for cleaning up <laughs> And with that, I think we should probably call this uh, wild ride of, event, of an adventure. Didn't I call it earlier? I said it was a wild ride. Now we're crashing into um, the tarmac at our destination airport. The end. Uh, thanks, everyone, <laughs> for joining. Um, we have been joined by Nesgrax. I reanimated a dead person. Yeah, I never did that before. <laughs> <laughs> Olive He made a ghoul and he liked it <laughs> And Dr. Crud the third And he's gonna make another one for me <laughs> Yep <laughs> Oh no Oh no Oh no <laughs> This has been Fire Breathing Kittens If you like this or you know at least part of it uh, Leave us a nice review Listen to some other episodes See what you think. It's all good fun and things go crazy quite a lot. So we'll see you <laughs> next week. <laughs> bye. Bye. Cheers, bye. Bye bye. Imagine you're eating pasta with tomato sauce. You're sitting at a table holding a fork and a knife. When do you suppose was the first time that another person did that? There has to be a first time. So what year did it happen? 1800? 1700? Earlier? Tomatoes are not native to Italy. They come from the Americas. So the first spaghetti with tomato sauce had to have been sometime after 1492. And the fork? That's a Roman invention. How about sitting at a table? That only came into fashion as the Roman Empire gave way to medieval Europe. We're surrounded by weird history. Come and explore it with me, Matt Lupu, on the Ponorail Podcast. Are you a fan of the true crime genre? My name is Alex Riken, and I'm the host of Totally Innocent. Every Wednesday on all major podcast platforms and YouTube, we take a semi-deep dive into the life of a serial killer or a high-profile murder case. The fun part about it is that I'm learning everything at the same time as you. There isn't hours and hours of research, so when I jump in to record an episode, it is a raw reaction every single time. If that sounds like a rabbit hole that you want to jump down, you can find the show by searching Totally Innocent on all major podcast platforms.